Chair, we're now live on YouTube. Right, thank you, Maisie. We'll get started then. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to, to this evening's planning committee meeting. My name is Councillor Brian Oldham. I, I am the chair of the Northampton Borough Council Planning Committee. There's just um, a, a statement I've got to read about the, vir the recording of virtual planning committee meetings. Um, the committee will have to just bear with me while I read it out again. Uh, it, it, the statement reads, the public have a right to record this meeting by filming or other means whilst it is open to the public. If members pass a resolution to exclude the public from part of the meeting, then the right to record will not apply to that part of the meeting. For that reason, if a resolution is passed to exclude the public, then for that part of the meeting to which the public do not have access, the live streaming of this meeting will be switched off and resumed if the meeting again becomes open to the public. That's that. Right, now we're uh, carrying on with the agenda. Um, and I've got item one, apologies please, Maisie. We have received apologies from councillors Chowdhury and Botwood. Oh, right, okay. So then, um, can we, on that basis, can you just introduce, for the benefit of the public and the meeting as a whole, who is present in members and officers, please? We have present councillors Birch, Kilby Shaw, Brian Markham, Mary Markham, Councillor Russell, Lane, Golby, Carly and Davenport. And for officers, we have Peter Bagley, Hannah Weston, Adam Smith, Nikki Scaife, Rita Bovey, myself and Tracy Tiff. Yeah, thank you. And on the apologies, as I said, Councillor King is on her way. She will be a bit late, but if we have started a, a particular application for when she gets here, then she'll have to be kept in the waiting room until we finish that particular application. So I'm taking it then, if we've got Councillor Chowdhury, uh, apology, and Councillor Botwood, we will have 11 members present at this meeting when Councillor King arrives. Yeah? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Maisie. Right, committee, you'll have seen that on, the, uh, on your papers that we have two sets of minutes. So I hope you've read them both, uh, both sets. So I'll ask that on the first one, the meeting that was held on the 19th of May, are you happy with that and to be accepted as a true record? Great. Chauvans? Yeah, we'll agree. Yeah, Chauvans? Are we all happy, Major? All agree. Sorry? Yes, that's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. And also, committee, we have the minutes of the planning committee meeting that was held on Tuesday, the 9th of June, 2020. Have you all read them? And are you happy with them to be accepted as a true record? Again, that's everyone, Chair. Thank you very much, Major. Thank you, committee, for that. Uh, right, we now go on to deputations and public addresses. We have 14 speakers tonight, committee. Um, that's going from 10A to 12B, a total of 14 speakers. Um, and while I'm mentioning that to all those uh, members of the public who are speaking, each speaker will get three minutes, no more, because the amount of speakers we've got, we've got to be strict to that. Uh, Maisie of the Democratic Services will be timing that, and when she informs me that time is up, I'm afraid that's it, even if you're in mid-sentence. So thank you. And now we'll come to declarations of interest and predetermination. Um, I'll just say that I have a declaration, well, no, I have a declaration of interest. The only thing I'm stating is that on 10C, uh, the Milton Ham, I am the ward councillor, uh, but I've got a open mind and on this and I shall be debating it and accordingly voting whenever I've heard the, the speakers and read the report fully and it's been debated. Anyone else got any declarations of interest or predetermination please? Councillors uh, Kilby Shaw and Mary Markham are indicating chair. Right, Councillor Kilby Shaw, Sam, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you chair. Um, item 7A, I'm the ward councillor for Obelisk. 
but I have no predetermination on the icon. Thank you very much. Councillor Markham, Mary, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a personal and disclosable pecuniary interest in items 12A and 12B as a board member of Northampton Partnership Homes, and I will leave the rooms for those, meet those items. Thank you very much, Councillor Markham. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Right. Thank you. Right. Sorry, sorry, Chair, can I just clarify members, because I can't see Arthur McCutcheon. Is, is it 10 or 11? Apologies, Chair. That, that, that's a good point. Thank you. There are 10 members. Councillor McCutcheon isn't in the meeting. But he's not sent his apologies. So, that's what it so it's 10 members now. OK. Thank you very much for that, uh, Nikki. Thank you, Maisie. Thank you. Right. Matters of urgency, there are none. Item six, list of current appeals and inquiries. Uh, Rita, this is your report. Would you present it, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, you, you would like to turn to page 17 of the agenda. Uh, you can see the, the list of appeals there. We have received uh, seven decisions this time since last committee. Um, in fact, four of them have been allowed and three dismissed. So I will be going through not all of them, but pick out uh, four which will be more relevant to uh, tonight's decision making, perhaps. Uh, I will be reporting on 49 Letterworth Road, 15 Burns Street, 41 Alfred Street, as well as number nine Allen Road. The first one uh, will be 49 Letter was wrote. Uh, members may remember that uh, it came before you in September last year for a change of use from uh, a dwelling house to a high mall for five persons. Uh, this is an application that was refused by, by members against officers' advice um, and, and was refused on highway safety grounds because there is there was a, a lack of parking capacity and impact on highway safety. However, uh, the inspector did not agree with the council's decision and considered that uh, the site in, is in a sustainable location with good access to facilities near to Wellingborough Road and also with good public transport link. And he considered that the occupant would be unlikely to own a car and, and the proposal would not cause material uh, in demand for on-street parking. So the appeal was allowed. Now, uh, unfortunately for this one, the appellant also claimed costs against the council and the cost was awarded. Uh, the reason was that I think, uh, I don't know what I remember, remember on that night on the 3rd of September, there were two applications came before you. Apart from this one at 49, there was another application at number 52, Lutterworth Road, which was far away. It was only a couple of doors down. So the members consider the one at number 52 first for a change of use to six person high moves. Um, the uh, committee uh, supported the officer's recommendation and approved that one. And then when it came to, uh, to determine number 49, uh, the member took a different view and refused this application. So notwithstanding, obviously, each application we can determine according to its merits, the inspector considered that the committee has been very inconsistent in decision making and therefore consider the behavior was unreasonable. Hence, course was awarded against the council because um, the two applications are so similar and yet one application you approve with no qualms regarding parking and yet the second one you use this reason for refusal. Um, so that's that one. Uh, I will answer any question further down after I report it, all of them, uh, Chair. That's so the fine. next one, yep, uh, is 15 Burn Street. Uh, this, this, this appeal uh, has been dismissed by the inspector. Uh, this application was refused by members um, on over concentration ground. Um, the concentration was 14.1%, obviously is significantly over the 10% limit 
in the recent uh, supplementary planning guidance. And the inspector considered the breach of the threshold as defined in the SPD as harmful to the character of the area and, and also through a reduction of family dwellings. So um, the decision is very good because it endorsed this very up-to-date SPD for us. So the application or the appeal was dismissed. And the third one, I'm gonna report you to number 41 Alfred Street. Remember, I remember this because we did a site visit. This site is not far from Cliftonville. Uh, this is a first floor flat. Uh, whereby already retrospective people were living in there. It had a bike store very tight. When we went out to look at it, the bike wasn't big, you know, the store wasn't big enough to fit the bike and half of the bike was sticking out the bike store. I don't know whether we remember, remember, remember that. So the application were refused on uh, insufficient facility to, for, for bike storage because the, the, the flat is on the first floor, so the resident will have a cart their bike upstairs to, to the first floor through two flights of stairs. Unfortunately, uh, the inspector allowed this appeal and considered that uh, if the bike store is not of, of sufficient size, maybe resident can use folding bikes. And also consider that the, the lack of facility will not materially harm the living condition. So the appeal was allowed. Uh, however, this one, the appellant did ap apply for costs against the council, but this, the cost wasn't awarded uh, because the inspector considered that, it, it, you know, uh, it, 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 the members exercised their judgment and based on the policy um, to refuse the application. So, uh, so it was reasonable. So no cost was awarded on that one. And finally for number nine, Allen Road, this is another appeal that was allowed by inspector. Uh, this application was refused on over concentration ground. Uh, the concentration was 10.4. So was just slightly over, it's 0.4 uh, of a percent uh, over the SPD allowance. The inspector considered that uh, in the local area because he did a site visit, that he felt that there's still a significant majority of properties in the area uh, fall within single family dwelling occupants and do not consider that 0.4 of a percent increase would harm the mix or, or, or the balance of the community. So therefore the, the slight over concentration did not cause any harm in, in, in his opinion. Again, this for this one, the appellant uh, applied for costs against the council, um, but the inspector uh, dismissed that claim and considered that notwithstanding the appeal was allowed, uh, the, the, the council added, uh, acted reasonably in accordance with the SPD. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, the cost claim was dismissed. So it's a big mixed bag of decision there. I, I, I think um, the, 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 from, from the from, from the lesson to learn, as it were, I think decision-making uh, consistency is important. Um, so that just a reminder for members about that one. So I'm ha quite happy to answer any questions if members have any, and I'll stop there. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you, Rita. There's one point I, I would like to make on it, uh, particularly with the, res uh, the matter of the concentrations and the comments that the uh, inspector passed on 49 and Lutherworth Road. I can understand where they're saying about the consistency that we're only three doors away and we pass one and would re refuse another. Uh, they can might be saying that's inconsistent, but it, I have to throw a respect to the inspectors with regards to uh, Burn, 15 Burn Street and 9 Allen Road, particularly with regards to the concentration. I wish they'd be con uh, consistent. Uh, we have a strict 10% concentration rule um, which is um, the, the, the line that, in my personal opinion, we should not should not be crossed. We we uh, do the right thing on on um, Burn Street at 14.1 percent concentration, and the officers do the right thing in Nine Allen Road in not bringing it to the committee. So I wish the inspector to uh, carry out some of the things that they're saying. I wish they'd be consistent. 
because that 10% um, in a 50 meter radius is to me is sacrosanct, it's cast in stone. Um, but thanks for that report and detailed report. That's the only comments I've got to make on it. Committee, anybody else got any comments to make on Rita's report? Councillor Brian Markham's indicated. Councillor Markham, Brian, yeah. Uh, can you hear me, Chair? Yes, I can. Yeah, um, thank you. It's, it's probably um, just missing it. One of the, one of the things there was um, an appeal on a delegated decision. Uh, I think it's thirteen twenty nine two thousand nineteen. Uh, uh, installation of an illuminated deposter. Probably perfectly obvious, but I'm not. I don't know what a deposter is. <laughs> Sorry, Rita, can you come back on that one? Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the, the one at 96 Bridge Street. Um, this is for a one of those quite big um, Everett uh, hall, electronic holding is six meters by, by three meters, whereby the, the, the image actually will be moving. I think you've probably seen it down you know, some of the motorways before they have quite a big hoarding mm. with colorful moving pictures. So that is what that is for. Uh, unfortunately for that one, um, notwithstanding our objection, because the, the sign is very near the edge of the conservation area, the inspector did not consider uh, that that sign will affect the setting of the conservation area or live by listed building. And that one was allowed by the inspector. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So, so Chair, the D stands for display or Something, yes, I don't know. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, anyone else, uh, committee? No one's uh, indicating. Okay, as I say, with that concentration figure of 10%, just finishing off, that was um, set by Professor Darren Smith of Loughborough University independently, and, to, and it's going to be part of our local plan part two. So I think it's strict, and I'm a bit disappointed that the um, inspectors do say yes, it's okay in one case. I know it's more. In, in uh, Bur Burn Street situation, but Nine Island Road, it's a line that shouldn't be crossed in my opinion, but still, that's all I've got to say. But thank you, Rita, for that. Um, appreciate that. Right, we've come on to, to item seven committee on page 19, which is the University of Northampton Park Campus, Barton Green Road, that's the location. It's an application for a variation to the S106 agreement to amend mortgagee clause. Uh, Nikki, I believe this is your report. Would you present it, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, just to, to give members an idea of where the, the site is, this is the, the site here. It's subject to um, an outline approval granted uh, back in, I, I think, 20, um, 2018, December 2018. It was for the demolition of um, university buildings and erection of 800 residential units. So subject to a 106 that included the um, an obligation to provide 8% affordable housing on site. So that's just an indication of where the site is. Um, and this was the, the outline master plan effectively approved at the time that the white bits show the, the residential areas. So in terms of this application, um, Persimmon Homes Midlands are seeking to vary what, what's referred to as the mortgagee clause within the Section 106 agreement, as the current wording um, isn't acceptable to as, as security to a lender in respect of a funding exercise. The current wording limits the value of the properties to existing use value, social housing, thereby it doesn't secure a maximum value of the asset for the registered provider, which presents difficulties for any registered provider in seeking funding for the affordable housing. The variation they're seeking is, is to amend that clause so that um, if it came to it and, and the affordable housing units were disposed of, and I'll, I'll come to that in a minute, that the, uh, that the lender could effectively seek market value for the units and, and, and not the lesser value. In respect to the, the mortgagee clause itself, this effectively seeks to ensure that the affordable housing required by the obligation is retained as affordable housing. 
but it also sets out requirements in respect of um, if, if there's a default in mortgage payments or charges. In the event that that happens, the mortgage lender can seek to dispose of the affordable housing, but they have to contact, give notice to the council, three months notice of their intention to dispose. And then the council has a further three months to either effectively find another registered provider to take the housing on or take the affordable housing on themselves. In the event that the council didn't respond, it's at that time that the chargee could dispose of the affordable housing. The, the council aren't aware of this situation ever occurring, so it, it, it is an extreme rarity. So effectively, this, this amendment is a paper exercise in relation to the lending and funding requirements for the scheme and doesn't in itself alter the provision of affordable housing on site. So therefore, officer recommendation is to approve the variation and for the wording to, to be agreed between the borough secretary and monitoring officer in consultation with the director of, of planning. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Nikki. Uh, Royal Committee, there's no speakers on this. So if there's any questions to ask of Nikki's report, please. Councillor Birch, Jane. Um, thank you, Chair. Nikki. Could you just clarify who the registered provider is? I don't actually know with, with this one, Jane. Sorry, I haven't got that, that detail. I'm not sure whether one's actually been allocated in this instance or whether Persimmon Homes are still looking to or, or still liaising with, with the registered provider. Right. Is it, is it the Housing Association who will... Um, manage this affordable housing I mean, it's all it's all shared ownership there it's not affordable housing as such so it's the it, it, i think it's a housing association in kettering or wellingborough it it is, is. It, it, yeah it, it is a housing association um that will manage manage the site and and it's or, or whilst it's persimmon that have come to us it's as i understand it is at the request of the registered provider because it, it it's seeking this funding that the, the registered provider are seeking. Okay, anyone else got any um, questions to ask of Nikki, please? Chair? Yeah. yeah. Councillors. Sorry. Sorry, Major, I can't hear you. Councillors Brian Markham and Councillor Goldby are in. Okay. okay, Matt, if you want to... Uh... Yeah, just a simple question. Um, how come this wasn't picked up previously when the first application came to us? As I understand it, I think it's a, it's a changing thing. This, this issue is actually now recognised by the National Housing Federation. So I think going forward, we will be amending the, the wording in 106 is so that if effectively it does take on this allows for this higher value in the mortgagee clauses but it is it is a recognized situation this um the, the 106 was signed back at the end of 2018 and and things have moved on and, and the way lenders approach um lending and funding has, has obviously changed since that time but it it, it is a recognized issue Okay, Matt, with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Councillor Mark and Brian, you wanted us. Um, question um, my question, Chair, was covered uh, by Councillor Birch. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Lane, Jamie, yes? Yeah, I was just going to say happy to propose we accept the officer's recommendation to agree this. Okay, if there's no further comments, I'm happy to, happy to take that as a proposal. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor Markham, Mary, yeah. All those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation on this, on item 7A? Show of hands, please. It's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee. Thank you for that. Right, on items eight and nine, uh, there is no Northamptonshire County Council applications and there is no Northampton Borough Council applications under item nine. Item 10, uh, the items for, deter for determination. 
the first one we have tonight um, committee is uh, the location of the development land at Lancaster Way, a uh, variation of the condition two of planning permission of 2012 and 09-09. I'm not going to read them all out. You've got them in front of you on your agenda. Um, Anna, this is your report. Would you like to present it, please? I would, please, yeah. Can you hear me and hear, can you see me and hear me? Oh, sorry. Can, yes, I can see you and we, I can hear you. Yeah, we sorry, can that's the wrong person speaking. It's, it's, it's Hannah Weston first, sorry. My apologies, I thought sorry. you said Hannah. <laughs> well, is, is, Anna, is Anna with us now? Councillor I'm with you, Chair, yes, I'm ready. No, no, it's Councillor King with us, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yes. Do you mean to... Anna, are you with us? I am. And I'm no, with you as well. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's what I'm after. Yeah, I'm here. Thing, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, okay, Anna, carry on. Thank you, Chair. So the application is at Lancaster Way. It's a variation of the previous permission 2012-0909, which was for 139 units. It's to amend the um, plans condition and also to alter a number of conditions to be in accordance with details that have been submitted and to remove conditions 10 and 16. So first, just to point you to the addendum, which you've hopefully received, I'll just quickly run through it. Um, we've received comments from Anglian Water, um, raising no objection to the scheme. And we've received an objection from Councillor Roberts, and the concerns um, relate to the work commencing without permission, the conditions not being sufficient, um, concerns about the badger impact, the public open space, drainage, overlooking, visibility displays, and um, parking um, on the site, that there should be no access through to Lear Bank, and that the application contradicts the MPPF. Um, all these matters are covered within the um, committee report. Five additional neighbour letters have also been received. Um, most of the comments are covered in the committee report, but those that aren't, um, there's a boundary plan and um, concerns were raised and following these concerns, the plan has actually been updated and I'll be showing you this. Um, the concern was raised about whether affordable housing was provided and it is still provided in accordance with the section 106. Um, concern that there might be breaches on the original consent. These will be, um, these, it is not a matter of consideration under this application. So it's not something we can look at today. Um, concern about the impact on schools and nurseries. The section 106 for the original application still ties. Um, so again, it's not something we can consider today in the variation application. And about the roundabout being dangerous. Um, again, this roundabout was designed in consultation with highways and is in accordance with approved details. So again, it's not something under consideration today. So as a result, um, we have three new plans. We have a management of open space plan and um, it shows how the open space will be managed. A new site boundary plan has mentioned, and also a badger, me badger method statement has been submitted, which was um, what the ecology requested for condition 17. So it's therefore considered that conditions one, two, and 17 should be amended to be in accordance with these new plans and in accordance with the badger method statement. So the application site is located off Lancaster Way. So the access point is in this location to show you the aerial view. So this is how it did look before development started. Development has now commenced. Um, most of the southern side of the site has been developed um, and the northern is um, to be developed still. So this is the approved layout of the scheme on the site under 2012-0909. Um, so you can see the access of Lancaster Way, the road system, a central area of um, play area and open space, and um, surrounded by existing residential properties. So if I just show you the amended site plan, There we are. Um, so you'll see the layout is largely the same as the existing, um, as the approved scheme. Um, the differences really are that the properties have been um, slightly shifted. 
um, and some of the properties have been twisted. So for example, this one is now slightly angled towards the road. Another one you might notice this, these two properties, they were in line and they've now been stepped. Um, I'd also like to point out this property, 112, it's been altered to a hitch roof um, to improve the relationship with the neighbour. Um, and this property has also again been altered to a hip roof to improve the relationship with this neighbouring property. Um, and just to make you aware, this is the um, apartment buildings, the flats. So there's four flats in this building. The remainder are um, residential units. So I'll just show you the approved scheme again, and then the revised scheme. So you'll see there's not much of a difference in layout. So just to show you a couple of the house plans that I pointed out, this is plot 112. So the approved scheme was a gable end facing the neighbouring property, and it's been altered to a hip roof to improve the relationship. And again, 122 was a gable end. It was this facing the bungalow next door, and it's been altered to a hip roof to improve the relationship. And then just to show you the flats, they are largely the same as previously approved. There are garages throughout the development, um, to, um, twin garages and also single garages. A lot have been removed as part of the site scheme, the amended scheme, and um, however, the same level of parking is provided. So this is a section plan, which indicates some of the relationships with um, some neighboring properties. I want to show you two key ones on this, which are the ones I've mentioned before. Plus 122 to 34 Borough Hill, which is the one on the east that I pointed out. So again, the, the dotted line shows what has been approved and it's been altered to a hip roof to improve that relationship. Again, on this, in plot 112, it was approved to be a um, gable end and it's been altered to a hip roof to improve the relationship. This is the boundary plan, which is the new updated plan that I mentioned in the addendum. Um, you'll note that they use strong um, brick walls on the key elevations to improve the street scene, fences um, in gardens um, as normal. Um, I, up the top is the connection through to Lee Bank. Now, it, there seems to be some confusion. Under the 2012-0909 application, there wasn't a connection through these. The plan showed a footpath leading up to a fence, but there was no actual access through. And that has, again, is the case now. There's no link through this road. And that is because the police do not want a link through here because of crime issues of people being able to cut through the site easily. Another concern that um, you will have seen in the report is a private right of way across the site, which is down this, um, access point between roads on Toaster Road, across the site, and down Robertsport Lane. Now, during the application, they were originally showing kissing gates here because the police didn't want people to easily be able to cut through the site. However, there is a vehicle private right of way across the site, so the developer has had to show instead a lockable gate that only those with a vehicle private right of way would have. Now, this private right of way isn't a matter under consideration in planning. It's a private matter. However, the developer has shown the retention of the vehicle private right of way. And that is why it's been changed to a gate. Um, just to show you the innovations, you can see a lockable gate. Now, concerns being raised that people would climb over this fence. Um, but the reason for it is to stop um, people on mopeds or cars being able, able to easily cut through the site and it needs to be a gate to keep that private right of way. Um, so that's the reasoning for it, as opposed to stopping people. Um, this, this just shows you that access. So it's a um, grass track. It goes around the back of um, existing properties on Toaster Road around this corner, but the pro access would be through here. And again, this is just looking the other way. So that's where we were standing, leads to Toaster Road. Um, open space wise, the open space plan in the section 106 outlines where open space should be provided. 
um, as you'll see in the report, it has changed and the green areas are where the open space is now proposed, such that there is an increase in um, provision over what's in the section 106. Um, and it's proposed that the section 106 should be amended to be in accordance with this provision. This is the management plan of the open space that I mentioned, just shows that the areas in red and green would be maintained by the developer. So just to take you through some photos, as I said, the southern side of the site is um, well underway. This is the roundabout at the access on Lancaster Way. And you can see the attractive entrance to the development with the retained TPO tree and grass entrances either side. This shows, this is an existing neighbouring property, so you can see how it relates when you're viewing it from Lancaster Way. And just to show you some of the internal street scenes, so you can see that um, they are quite an attractive um, street scenes inside the site. And this is where we're looking from the northern end of the site towards the south. So these haven't been built yet. Um, and these ones obviously are nearing completion. This um, photo, so these two semi-detached are part of the development site, but these ones are outside of the application site to the west. It just shows how it relates well to those properties. Again, this one shows the existing neighboring property and the relationship with the new plot here and that this is one of the areas of open space. Again, just showing the relationship with the properties to the um, south and the terrace row. And this is looking um, towards the site. So this is the existing properties on Hedgley Court. Um, sorry, these are the existing properties on Hedgley Court. And then these are the new properties that have been built, again, showing that they fit in well with the surrounding character. And again, this is still Hesley Court around the corner, existing property, and then you can see the development. And then the development include, included the need to provide a two-can crossing, um, and just to show that that has, has actually been completed now. So the principle of the application has been established under the 2012-0909 application. The design alterations are not considered to be um, major alterations that would impact on the appearance of the development. With regards to residential amenity, um, you'll see within the report that we've looked at every plot individually and we've worked closely with the developer to ensure the height differences between that approved and that now proposed do not have an unacceptable impact on neighbours. As a direct result, the plots 112 and 122 were altered to hit roofs as previously outlined. One positive of the scheme is that we've managed to include EV charging now. So there are 110 EV charging points in this development, whereas the current scheme can be built with none. Large concerns are raised about the impact on badges in this scheme. Um, as you'll see within the report, um, when assessing a variation application, significant weight has to be given to the existing permission and this application can only look at the changes proposed. Under the existing permission, the scheme largely to the same layout can be built um, and there are no conditions with regards to badges because at that time, we did not know there were badges on the site. It would be unreasonable um, for the council to refuse a vari variation application, which does not propose significant alterations to the approved scheme with regards to layout. It is also the case that the council cannot present and presently de demonstrate a five-year housing land supply, and this site is allocated for housing provision. It is considered that in accordance with the presumption in favour of sustainable development in paragraph 11 of the NPPF, development should be permitted unless any adverse impacts of doing so will significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits. Whilst it is acknowledged that there would be um, some impact on the badges, colonies on the site, it is considered that the need for the housing and the fact that the development already has consent for a very similar layout would outweigh this harm. NCC Ecology did raise um, concerns with the proposal, however they recommended two conditions that could be added should consent be um, given 
due to the need for housing. These are for a certain area not to be built on until a license has been granted by Natural England, which is proposed, and also for a um, budget strategy, which has now been submitted and NCC Ecology have advised that this is acceptable and therefore it's proposed also to add a condition for the development to be in accordance with this. Another issue is surface water. A lot of in, impact and um, a lot of concerns have been raised as to the impact of um, the development on flooding in the surrounding area and surface water. We have, however, consulted the lead local flood authority, Anglian Water, and the environment agencies, who are the specialists on these matters, and none of them have raised an objection. It's therefore not considered that there would be an unacceptable impact with regards to um, surface water and flooding. It is considered that the development is of an attractive appearance, as you can see in the photographs, and the alterations do not significantly differ from what has been approved. It is therefore recommended that consent be approved in principle, subject to the completion of a section 106 legal agreement and securing the amended open space and monitoring fee and subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you for that very detailed explanation. Thank you very much for that report. Right, we have seven speakers on this application, and I'll say this now before we uh, start, before I start calling them. Um, as I said before, the speakers have three minutes, uh, and we've got to be strict on that. And speakers, when you've spoken and issued your statement, if you just remain uh, in situ with us in case the committee have got any questions to ask, we are to be obliged. So I now call upon uh, Councillor Walker. Uh, Councillor Walker, would you come and speak, please, and identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please? Yes, uh, hello. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Graham Walker, Ward Councillor for Far Cotton and Delapree. Um, so oh, three, thank you very much. For, yeah, yeah well, thank you. Well, Graham, yeah. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak on this uh, application. I'm speaking on this, obviously, for the residents of Farcotton and Delapree. I have um, some concerns around flooding problems, um, which happens regular now in Farcotton. Um, I use the word bottom of the bowl when I talk about Farcotton because the amount of water that comes from up the hill to the bottom of the bowl, and that's for the people in far cotton finish up getting flooded most times um you know I've, I've watched this grow i've watched this site grow and i've watched the problems that continue on far cotton wreck um but we are where we are and obviously we need the houses but i would ask you know you councillors to take a look at this application on the grounds of flooding in far cotton because i mean the, de the developer you know, he said he couldn't guarantee uh, to look after a storage water tank on land he doesn't own. That concerns me. Um, okay, we talked about Anglia Water, uh, the drainage pipes under the track. He doesn't own and may or may not be adopting them, or it may not be adopted by Anglia Water. That concerns me. Um, there is a soak away that may or may not be taken water from these houses. So between NBC, NCC and Anglia Water, we need to take some responsibility and stop this application. Um, we have a new roundabout dropping more water into the existing sewers um, that the road ever did drop into them sewers. Um, there's been many other issues on this, but that's, that's by the by. We had a quote from the Environment Agency the last time we was flooded one in hundred years. I'm 72 and I've seen far cotton flood at least six times and it's getting worse as we go on. So please don't add to the problem. Kindly uh, look kindly on the people of far cotton. Far cotton has a Victoria sewer system um, and it can't take what is being sent down from this site. You know every winter our recreation ground gets floods um, you can't put a point into half a pint pot. So I will ask the committee again, think about the people at the bottom of the bowl. If you pass this, it will be for someone else's gain. 
and other people's pain if it goes through. Please reject this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Graham. If you just remain there with us in case the committee's got any questions to ask of you and your statement. Committee, have got Thank any you. questions to ask of Councillor Walker, please? No one's indicated. Thank you, Maisie. Uh, thank you, Graham. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I call you. upon Councillor Davenport, please. Can you hear me? It's very, very muffled. It's very muffled, Julie. It's very muffled. Oh, I'll get a bit closer. Is that any better? It's a bit. Look, I, I can hear you, but if you'd identify yourself for the record and in what capacity you speak, please. Okay, uh, Councillor Julie Davenport, Councillor for uh, Shelbury and Bar Hill Ward. Okay. Okay, you have three minutes, Julie. Thank, uh, thank you. Okay. I was on the planning committee when this application was first passed, and I was a lone voice then trying to explain the different problems with this development. The problems are still there, and three minutes is not enough to explain them all. Now, my biggest concern is whether the planning committee really understand the issues of this development and what's been going on and do you understand this application in front of you because to me it's one of the most complex that i've ever seen and you know is there a reason for that now i would like this committee to demonstrate their understanding of it now the developer i'm told has been building these very plans that you're looking at for um the past year so i put to you that another month to de defer this so that this can seriously be looked at for the different problems that it's going to bring to far cotton so that is what i'm asking for a deferment now the drainage strategy mentioned in the conditions is out of date it refers to things like foul water being pumped off the site to Lancaster Way. Now, this was a pumping station and that was removed from the plan a year ago. And Anglian Water has accepted this management plan just last week, mentioning this pumping. Although now, uh, from what I can gather from the agenda, they're saying that they object. Uh, they'd also refuse uh, to comment on the water runoff plan. And they claim the design of the drainage pipes and proof of whether it would lead to flooding was not their concern. So they didn't comment. That's why they have no comment. They said it's not their concern, flooding of far cotton. The agenda currently suggests that NCC flooding have no concerns, but obviously we've heard this evening that they now object. Now, there's no flood data for the roundabout. That is a huge concern, as with uh, what Councillor Walker stated, the flooding. So why is there no flood data, and how can that be okay? And also, no roads will be adopted, no public space. Uh, and the water storage tanks will also be the responsibility of the developer forever. And just last week, we learned that some of the drainage will not be adopted by Anglian I'm Water. Sure. I'm sorry, I'd just have to cut across you, Councillor Davenport, Julie. Uh, three minutes is up, as you say, it's very tight, but that's all we can afford, I'm afraid. But if you just remain yeah. with us in case the, can, the committee uh, have got any questions to ask of you, please. Committee, you've got any questions to ask of Councillor Davenport, please? No one is indicating, Chair. Thank you, Maisie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you very much. Um, I now call upon Councillor Roberts, please. Emma, are Thank you. you. Yeah. I am, yes. Thank you, Chair. If you, uh, if you just 
Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, you That's do. Okay. okay. Councillor Emma Roberts, um, Ward Councillor for Dalabri and Briar Hill. Uh, completely agree with, with Julie that three minutes is, is not sufficient and I'll try and do my best. There are so many inconsistencies with this application. Um, there are so many reasons that it shouldn't proceed as presented. The application um, N2012-0909, which currently has permission, isn't being built. Nothing is currently being built to plan. This was pointed out first as an issue back in um, 2018, early 2019, and actually requests for a variation application were made then. Nothing was done until November 2019. And this application was actually put forward in December 2019. There were so many inconsistencies with that application and so many queries being raised that we actually isn't being brought to you until now because of all of those points. So many objections were raised by local residents and by councillors. Um, and I give some credit to the um, planning officer for the work that she's had to do because this is an extremely complex application. We've got a right of way across the site that was heavily disputed before but is now included within the plans but isn't in the construction management plan. We've got a substation structure which isn't in this plan which should be on the plan because it's a structure. We've got occupation on the site yet we've got recommendations within this planning application to remove any conditions that relevant, uh, sorry, that reference uh, prior occupation. That absolutely should not happen. The site should not be occupied until all conditions have been met. We've got contaminated soil now accepted. We've got concerns over a community protection warning. Soil testing is now required. However, soil has been moved around on the site for two years. I'd like to understand where we're gonna test the soil from. We've got the badger issues, which are clearly documented. NCC Ecology can't recommend approval. Suitable mitigation measures haven't been put in place. The method statement is very, very late in the day. I urge full reading of the Badger comments. We've got no wildlife corridors, no foraging ability, and as I said before, no mitigation added there at all. We've got drainage and flooding data that needs further review. The soak away data doesn't match. The highway authority and the planning authority are looking at different things. I echo Councillor Davenport's comment with regards to the pumping station. There is no pumping station, yet it's referenced in the drainage strategy. And we're, we're asked to understand that Anglian Water have approved something that doesn't actually exist in the plans. Anglian Water aren't looking to adopt the areas that aren't owned by the developer. And as you'll see from the plans, there are significant areas that are not owned by the developer. So it will be the developer's responsibility. The National Planning uh, Policy Framework, I take exception to the fact that this um, application deals with that. It doesn't. The development isn't um, offering uh, in addition to biodiversity with the open public space, in fact, it removes it. We've got, as I say, no wildlife foraging. None of the corridors that were recommended in the original planning application have been carried out. None of the activities that were recommended with regards to wildlife have been carried out. And there are just so many inconsistencies that mean you cannot reasonably be asked to consider this application in its current format. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Thank you very much. If you just remember, uh, just remain where you are for a moment. Uh, I know you're not going anywhere, but just in case the committee have got any questions to ask of you, Alan. Any questions to ask of Councillor Roberts' committee? Councillor Russell. Okay. Councillor Russell, Catherine, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Roberts, Emma, have you expressed um, the different statements that you've made today to our planning office? And if so, I assume that you have. What kind of response have you had back from them? Um, OK. Yeah, have I expressed the concerns? Absolutely. All of the concerns have been expressed on more than one occasion, um, either by myself or by other residents. As far as the response I've received, some of the answers um, and items we've had full and detailed responses to, others very limited response at all. I, I feel for the planning officer, uh, I mean that with the utmost respect because this is a significant application with lots of documents that have had to go backwards and forwards where changes have had to be made and things have had to be done to comply. Um, but I personally don't feel that the response from either the planning or the developer on this and the concerns that have been raised have been realistically considered. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Councillor Roberts? No? 
No one is indicating. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Thank you very much. Uh, I now call upon uh, Mr. Pete Stanton, please. Mr. Stanton, are you there? Hello. Yep. Can you hear me? If you, yep. Yes. If you could just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please, um, Mr. Stanton. I'm a, a local resident, live on Lear Bank. So, uh, okay. So I actually um, sort of back on to the new estate. So right. You have three, three of the new houses now. So, okay. Um, you have three minutes, Mr. Yes. Stanton. Thank you. Uh, just a short one. At least in one of the applications, uh, uh, there was discussion earlier about whether it's true, there was shown a foot connection between Lear Bank and the, um, and the new estate. Um, from my point of view, that'd be a good thing to enable me to do certain journeys that at the moment are really difficult, like going to Tesco on Mia Way. Um, and I'm quite surprised the police find it a, a serious crime issue because it's no different than the connection on the Buckingham Fields estate on Tukes Be Close that goes there. And I saw a, um, I don't know how old she was, but white haired woman using it last Wednesday, walking stick in one hand, shopping bag in the other. And that doesn't seem like a high crime person, but it does seem like somebody who's making a journey that otherwise would be more pollution. And, our two biggest causes of death in town pretty much are air pollution and not getting enough exercise and designing estates that sort of prevent us improving those doesn't feel like a great idea and that's basically where I'm come from that's all I've got to say. Okay Mr Stanton. Keep it quick. <laughs> Thank you very much if you just remain yep. there. Has anybody got any questions of Mr Stanton please? No? No one's indicating, Chair. Thank you, Maisie. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll call bye. upon uh, Sally Jones, please. Um, Sally, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. And here, if you just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. I'm Sally Jones and I represent Northampton Shear Badger Group. Okay, Sally, you have three minutes. Thank you. So we object to the layout and ask that a robust condition is added. Um, the site has at least 13 badgers in a large clan and um, six sets have been closed out of the seven, so one remains. It's been documented badgers existed on site for many, many years, for decades, in fact, in our records and in resident testimony, but this was ignored. Badgers are protected species and a material consideration in the planning process and a badger related condition must be included. Um, the facts about the badgers on site have changed considerably since planning was originally given. The condition should ensure that a main set is protected and appropriate mitigation plans put in place before any further work continues. The timescale for this should be immediate and work near the set should cease until this is in place. It will ensure the badgers are officially monitored, which has not happened to date. I argue that if the developer had found a Roman fort on site, NBC would have stopped work immediately to get this sorted out. This is no different for the Badgers. The condition will help with this huge oversight of NBC when planning was given originally. Our re recommendations have been sent to NBC on multiple occasions and include correct, a correct artificial asset. Um, we've seen photos which show it's not been built correctly or with the right materials for badgers. Rethinking the layout by the set only, a wildlife corridor and a 30 meter protection zone that's planted appropriately for privacy, light exclusion and food and natural behavior and space for the badgers to rebuild other sets. They do not live in one set alone. The site layout is not fit for purpose for the badgers and it pushes them to one end. There's no net gain in biodiversity, but a reduction. The developer has known about these badgers for many, many years. Um, we can see that should the layout be approved with no badger condition or changes, it will be detrimental to the clan living on site. And I cannot express that enough. It could be the ceasing of this clan. Uh, badger Trust and Wildlife Trust also agree. It will become a major problem for residents who end up living there, badgers digging in the gardens and digging new sets, which we're already seeing around the site. These sets in gardens become protected under law, so it often leads to crimes being committed to remove the badgers. We'll see an increase in calls to NBC, housing associations and landlords who own the properties, but unfortunately there's very little that can be done once they're there. 
So now your decision can actually help with this now. And that's it, I'm finished, thank you. Thank you very much, Sally. If you just remain there with us uh, in case the committee's got any questions to ask of you, please. Committee, any questions to ask of uh, Sally Jones, please? Councillor Brian Marks in. Councillor Mark and Brian, yeah. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Could look, um, that, uh, ask Sally, um, there's, uh, in the addendums issued today, there's, there's um, comments and actually in the officer's presentation, there's reference to a new, fairly new Badger management plan. Um, I just wondered if Sally had seen this plan and if this goes anywhere near uh, and, and there's a, uh, an amendment to, to the recommendations covering badges. Uh, just these changes in the addendum, uh, do they go anywhere near addressing Sally's concerns or would she like more? Sally, can you like to answer that? Yeah, thank you. Um, I have seen them and I welcome that the conditions that are being proposed to be put in, um, I welcome those, but no, they don't go far enough. Um, and that is... I'm saying this for genuine reasons that in the future, these badges are going to cause problems in the properties, the residents. These badges don't have any space. So five hectares of their space has gone and six of their sets. Badges don't live in one set and that is a fact. So they're going to have to build new sets elsewhere. We're not asking at all for the entire site to not be built. Absolutely not but the badgers need more space. And that is a fact, that is a fact of how they live. So we're asking for badger corridors, as I mentioned, and I have given um, full information to the planning department about all of this and the developer, but the developer has chosen not to interact with us on this. Um, we've offered our services many times. So corridors, um, 30 meters around a set, so they have natural space and privacy, um, foraging materials, so native planting and things like that. So really, we would like more, um, and I think it's essential that there is more, otherwise there's going to be lots of future problems, and that would include potentially taking out a few houses nearer the Badger set. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Sally, please? No? No one is indicating, Chair. Thank you, Maisie. Thank you, Sally. And I call upon Mr. Peter Frampton, please. Mr. Frampton, are you with us? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Frampton. If you just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Thank you, Chair. I'm the agent for the applicant. Okay, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Many of the details required by condition on the approved planning permission have been submitted with this application so as to minimise the number of conditions which are necessary. Your planning officer has rightly been meticulous in her assessment of this application, as evident from her report to this committee, setting out the precise details of the variations sought. Uh, and as the planning officer states at 7.5, the vast majority of changes are repositioning plots by a de minimis amount and repositioning would not be evident on site. Uh, and in terms of the sort of layout details, that's arisen because of a approved engineering details pursuant to a condition on the 2012 permission in terms of levels and distance from road carriageway. The previous speakers have made reference to flooding uh, Councillor Walker, that's addressed at 7.55 and 7.56 of the report, and the surface water drainage strategy and management strategy are controlled by condition six. Councillor Julie Davenport referred to foul drainage, and that's controlled by condition seven. Councillor Roberts referred to the pumping station, that has a separate planning permission in its own right, and a variation has been submitted for that scheme because of the requirements of the highway authority in terms of access. Uh, and so at each point that's been raised by the planning officer, we've endeavored to provide the required information in, a, in order to enable this very comprehensive report uh, to come before you tonight. 
and you'll hear from the next speaker about the works that have been done to protect badgers. Again, planning conditions are rightly imposed. Condition 16, uh, necessity to obtain a license from Natural England under separate legislation. And condition 17 deals with the uh, protection of badgers during construction. This development is vitally important to people seeking new homes where households are either financially unable or do not seek home ownership. 50 new homes will be available as affordable housing. 89 new homes will be provided as private rented accommodation. Uh, and in my uh, understanding, this will provide an important contribution to local housing choice. And 139 households will welcome the approval of this application tonight for the opportunity the scheme provides to meet their housing needs. I hope members will agree with the careful and considered assessment of these proposals by your planning officer and grant planning permission accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frampton. If you just remain uh, online with us. Committee, any questions to ask of Mr. Frampton? I can see you, Jane, Councillor Birch, yeah. Anyone else? Chair. Pardon? Sorry, Jane, anyone else, Maisie? After Jane? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Frampton, thank you for um, your comments. Um, you say you've been working with the planning officers, and that's clear because it's a very complicated um, application. How, there's tremendous um, concerns from residents, from elected members, from the local councillors. How much consultation, how much have you listened to them? Because I, as far as I can see from what we've heard tonight, as well as reading the, um, the comments in, in the application, the papers, there's you know, really genuine concerns, really, you know, they're not superficial, they're not, it's not nimbyism, it's, it's well considered, well researched, and they have evidence of uh, items that are being, you know, issues that are being ignored, um, issues that are not being taken seriously, and, you know, how, what's your comment on that? Because as far as I can see, um, the residents and the people that have spoken tonight really do have some very um, real concerns. And you know, you talk to planners, but what about everybody else? Yes, uh, this, ap this application has come, has been made to your authority, uh, supported by a range of both technical and environmental assessments, such as drainage, such as highways, such as ecological appraisal, um, which has, have all been put out by HANA to the various consultees who provide the informed response to your authority. Uh, where we've had issues uh, from residents in terms of potential uh, relationship of a dwelling to an existing dwelling, just as HANA mentioned, she suggested we hip a roof to uh, mitigate that, the applicant responded to that. So I understand the fears that people have about flooding from housing development, but in terms of the information that's before this authority, the drainage strategy, the management strategy, that's all been put to informed consultees and they're advising your authority as the planning authority that they have no objections. Now, I may not be able to convince uh, a particular person that this development has protected the flood risk of far cotton. I'm a Northampton boy, so I know far cotton uh, very well. Um, but we have to rely on informed consultees testing the information and evidence provided by the applicant. Well, thank you, Mr. Frampton. Anybody else got any questions to ask of uh, Mr. Frampton, please? Councillor Brian Markham's indicating chair. Councillor Markham, Brian, yes, please. Sorry, um, yes, Mr. Frampton. Um, with reference to the badges, um, my recollection, what you said, the you're waiting. Um, you will listen to what Na Natural England say, and then um, that you're also taking measures to protect the badger set, the the remaining ones during 
construction. Um, what about after construction, um, you know, uh, maintaining the badger community, if you like, and their sex and, and their habitats um, when, when, you've, when you've finished? And um, I'm certainly, uh, you know, say, not saying that the whole thing doesn't go ahead, but, um, but you know, will, uh, will, are you committed to maintaining those badger sets as well, not just during construction, but later on? I'm following natural England's advice. Mr. Frampton. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. So you're right, there are two issues. One is the protection of badgers during the construction process. That badger protection management plan has been submitted, as Hannah said, and is acceptable to the county ecologists. The second issue is the long term protection of badgers. Uh, we have to obtain a license from Natural England under the Badger Act before the existing uh, set uh, can be closed. There is an exclusion area of the site that no work can take place until that license is granted. But you're going to hear next from uh, an ecologist, Anna Swift, who is speaking to the committee specifically on badgers, Councillor Litton, it may be that you'd want to come back to her uh, with more detailed information because she is the specialist. Thank you, Mr. Frampton. Anyone else got any questions of Mr. Frampton, please? No? No one's indicated. Uh, thank you, Mr. Frampton. Thank you. Thank you, Maisie. And I'll call upon uh, Anna Swift, please. Hello, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? I can, and thank you very much. And if you'd like to identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. I'm Anna Scott Swift. I speak on behalf of the developer as their consultant ecologist. Thank you. You have three minutes. Thank you very much. So I note there have been some objections from NCC Ecology, the local budget group and the wildlife trust regarding impacts to budgets. I'll address these in turn. Um, the first issue is the artificial budget set has been built, but hasn't yet been approved by Natural England. There's a concern that what has been constructed is too small and unsuitable. Uh, now, Natural England were unable to provide advice on the artificial set back in March when we asked them during the COVID-19 crisis. They didn't have the staff to respond. Um, and as such, a set has to be in place for six months before there's any license application to close a set, uh, to close the main set, and it has to be demonstrated to be in use by badgers. Um, we decided to construct the artificial set at that time. And then once we did get the advice to amend the set details, if necessary, um, depending on what NE said, um, Natural in England came back to us mid-July to advise that the size, the scale and layout and construction of the artificial set were indeed considered appropriate. Um, the artificial set was also monitored by us in May 2020 and is found to already be in use by badgers. Uh, another issue is that appropriate surveys haven't been carried out to secure a license. Um, we're currently updating budget surveys and monitoring at the site. Um, and of course, we can only apply for the budget license once this planning permission has been granted. Uh, a third issue is about badgers causing problems and digging in people's gardens. This is easily remedied by the addition of badger proof fencing both in the vicinity uh, of the new houses that are close to the artificial set, as well as any houses that, that are close to the boundaries where the badgers are traveling. Um, issue four, that we haven't complied with the ecological mitigation hierarchy. I would say we've had detailed discussions with the developer, their technical team, and of course, Natural England at every stage. Um, we've sought Natural England's advice, we've implemented it, um, and we've made badger license applications to their satisfaction. As far as the issue regarding no coherent ecological network, this, this was an issue raised by Natural England, as well as other, others, and we take this on board. Um, we, we can allow for badger movement corridors along both the northern and eastern boundaries um, uh, to ensure that they can still move along those areas and get to their foraging grounds. Um, 
the uh, the need for an extension to the the temporary budget zone uh, that was described by NCC Ecology um, to basically connect the artificial set with the existing main set on site. Um, I can confirm is in place. It's actually already in place. I visited the site yesterday. Um, so that satisfies that condition uh, suggested by NCC Ecology. Um, so in conclusion, we have... Uh, Sorry, my is three minutes up. Yes, that's right. Sorry about that, Anna. Just if you just bear with us, uh, in case the committee's got any questions to ask of you. Thanks for that. Um, any questions of Anna Swift, please, committee? Councillor Birch, Jane. Councillor and Russell, Councillor Russell. As well. Go on then, Jane, first. Go on. I, um, thank you, Chair. Um, Anna, you've talked a lot about badgers. Um, I noticed also in the papers that there's an um, historical orchard that has been um, dug up uh, as a result of the development. Are there any plans to restore the orchard? You know, it's, it's, it was a great feature of this open space and sort of wildlife area in the past. Anna, would you like to answer that, please? Yes, please. Um, I. I mean, detailed landscaping proposals I haven't had sight of, um, and I'm sure will be covered by condition, but nevertheless, we'll be proposing fruiting trees and shrubs um, as part of the strategy to, to compensate for the badgers for their foraging. Um, but I see um, an opportunity to provide some, some fruit trees, perhaps in some of the public open space areas to compensate for this loss. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Russell, Catherine. Thank you. Um, Anna, you said you you can provide um, boundary walkways for the badgers to get around the areas. I, I feel quite sorry for them if they're going to have badger proof of fencing and um, various other blockades to stop their movement. And I can understand why um, I have badgers in my garden and, and I know what it's like. However, you say you can, will you provide um, walkways and, and, and areas where badgers can work, can walk and, and move around and do their natural... I didn't, catch that, I didn't catch that last bit, Catherine, what was that? Where badgers can walk around and do natural foraging and, and natural behaviour. Okay, thank you. Anna, Anna Swift, please. Yep. Um... We, we're proposing some corridors along the northern and eastern areas that, that get them to their key foraging grounds, essentially. So as part of those corridors, I'd quite like to plant them with some, um, both some cover, some thorny bushes potentially, and some fruiting shrubs so that they, they get to forage on their way along their little corridors. Um, and the badger-proof fencing is, is to prevent them from getting access to gardens where they are causing trouble. Effectively, what we don't intend to do is prevent them from getting to where they need to go. So we, uh, we are currently monitoring um, their, what looks to be their, um, their access out of the sort of northern corner of the site towards adjacent plain fields and perhaps possibly out of this sort of eastern uh, vehicular private access um, as well. Um, the western corridor that gets them out towards the railway line, those sorts of details will also be covered in the, the future license application for closure of the main set. So in terms of boundary plan, in terms of planting and maintaining that corridor, that will be that will be covered. But effectively then we're allowing budgets to get out to all of those areas. Um, in the vicinity where they'll be using for, you know, they'll be going to forage and, um, and that sort of thing. Right, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Anna. Has anyone else got any questions to ask of Anna, please? Before I move on back to um, Anna Weston, the, the officer. Chair, Hello. I appreciate I'm not on the committee. I wondered if I could be humbled with a question to Anna. To Anna who? No, I'm afraid not, Emma. Sorry, I'm afraid not. Um, so, is there any more questions from the committee? No? Okay, right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Anna. Um, 
before I go on to uh, the committee to ask questions of you, Anna, um, how do you want to come back on with some of the points that's been raised? And <laughs> there's been many. Do you want to come back on any? Yes, please, Chair. Yes, go on. So try and run through them in the same order as they were raised. Um, I believe Councillor Davenport um, suggested that there was an objection now, and I think that might be a misunderstanding. There isn't any objection to flooding on flooding grounds from any of the consultees. Um, the mm. leader of the Flood Authority, Anglia and Water, and the Environment Agency don't raise an objection, so they advise that they're happy with the details. Um, Councillor Roberts mentioned a substation not being on the plan, and um, this was purposely asked to be removed um, by us. And because the substation is not part of the original application, so it can't be considered under this application. That's the reason why it was removed. Um, again, Councillor Robert has mentioned not wanting occupation until all conditions are um, complied with. And um, again, it's not reasonable. And um, we have to, when we're in conditions, um, look at the reasonability of the conditions. Um, and we've looked at them again through this application and worded them how we consider is reasonable to do them um, and it wouldn't be reasonable to not require any occupation until every single condition is applied, complied with um, because some of them for example a bin store for the flats wouldn't be needed until those flats are occupied. In um, regards to contamination, the contamination condition remains as it was um, because um, the environmental health are still looking at the contamination issues so that will require details within one month of it being approved, if it is approved. Um, Mrs. Jones um, mentioned wanting budget conditions. Um, we have added two conditions, which were those requested by NCC Ecology, should we um, recommend approval. Um, those are the only conditions that the um, County Council Ecology has requested. And so it's not considered reasonable to add any others um, because no others were um, requested. Um, with regards to the Badger corridors that Anna Swift um, mentioned, these aren't shown on the plan. I believe they may be referring to an area outside of the site, um, which is also where the artificial set is. Um, so we can't control that through this application. Um, and then finally, just to again, um, stress the importance of, um, this is a variation application and they can build what's already been approved and we can only look at what is changing. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you, Anna. Right, committee, it's um, your turn to ask questions, if any, of Anna. Chair. Uh, is there any questions? Do you want to say something, Peter? Yeah, if I may, please, Chair. Just, just to inform committee, um, Councillor King has left the meeting. Um, she was late for the start of the, the committee um, because, uh, and that meant she missed the chance to um, give any indication of whether she might have a prior um opinion on this she's listened to some of the issues discussed here she has commented on public in these in the past and therefore will take no further part in the determination of this application thank you so, so therefore we're down to nine nine members voting on this okay right thank you very much for that peter so, sorry committee any questions to ask about i can't believe there isn't any uh councillor kilby sure sam and councillor brian yeah. markham yeah, thank you. I've got yeah. Councillor Birch as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just have a, a few questions um, regarding badges and legality regarding the um, Protection of Badges Act 1992. So I've been taking the opportunity while the discussion has been going on um, to, to look over the Act. And in terms of it being an offence to interfere with the badger set, um, you're guilty of an offence if you knowingly cause or permit an act to be done which is unlawful um, by subsection one above. This is section three of the act. And one of those is um, destroying a badger set. Um, given that there is no permission yet for the badger sets to be um, moved or destroyed, where would we sit legally with that? Would it be permitted? And in addition to that, um, the Northamptonshire Badger Group has said that six sets have already been destroyed. Are we aware whether there were licenses um, obtained for doing that? And if not, um, has a criminal act been um, committed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anna, did you want to come back on that or Peter? 
yes, through UCHA. And yes, I am aware they have got licenses for the ones that have been closed so far. So I've been discussing it in detail with Natural England. They have got licenses for those. Um, and they are now looking at the um, main set as well. The um, removal of the sets is covered by legislation outside of planning. So Natural England would have to give their license for its removal. Um, and they couldn't do that without the license. So it's covered outside of planning but they couldn't do it without the consent. Okay, thank you, Councillor Birch. Jane, thank you for that, Sam. Thank you, Chair. Um, Hannah, this is quite a substantial um, change or amendment to the original application. Um, the original application was not um, SIL liable. Does it now become SIL liable? Future. No, so we can't add still on variation applications when the first application was decided before still becoming in place. So we can't add still on this one now. Thank you. Councillor Markham, Brian. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, going back, I've, I've several speakers, but the gentleman from Lee Bank um, commented about the closure um, of the access. I remember previous applications, uh, a lot of people were very much in favour of maintaining that link. Now, it's a condition there that um, it sh yeah, there should be a link. I, I realise the police have asked for it to be closed, but they could maybe change their mind. Um, the physical link, as I understand it, is being provided but closed off on on the advice of the police well i could we request that to be reconsidered and and you know that there's suitable barriers and so on installed where do we stand if we said we would like to see that link which i remember you know previous applications coming through very much the committees previous committees been in favor of having that link Anna? sorry through you yeah. chap um so on the original application, there isn't a link through this. Um, it does, I can see why people have thought there was because the footpath goes right up to a fence, but there wasn't actually a physical link through. And there isn't now, there's a um, large fence in that location. Um, so there isn't a link. Now I've received comments from people who want the link and also who don't want the link. So there's a real mix about it. Um, the, I've gone on the advice of the police who advise that there are two separate um, criminal activities in the area. And if there's a direct link through the site, it can result in more criminal issues in the area. And that's the reason why they don't want the link. Um, so I would recommend against it because of what the police say, really. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions around that, please? Before I move on to comments. Nobody? Councillor Russell is indicating. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Russell, Catherine. Thank you. Um, it seems to me that m most of the open spaces um, have, have been accounted for or um, are due to be developed. And um, I'd like to know when the fruiting trees and, and um, various other um, uh, trees that, that Anna originally spoke about are going to be planted because it's going to take some years for this to, to be developed and um, for it to come to fruition. Anna? Thank you, through you Chair. Um, so yes, so landscaping wise we have um, recommended a condition agreeing with the landscaping plans um, for the planting they're proposing which would have to be done in the first planting season um, upon completion. Um, the most logical way, otherwise, obviously, the development would usually result in the death of um, what's been planted. Um, with regards to extra fruit trees, um, I believe again this was referring to an area outside of the development site where the artificial set is. Um, I'm aware that they were planning on planting um, foraging um, trees and plants on this area, but it's not within the application site, so again, it's not something we can um, condition. Um, but we, we 
we've um, got the landscaping condition, which is what we would be limited to at this stage. Thank you, Anna. Anyone else got any questions of Anna, please? No? Councillor Carly does. Councillor Carly, Muna, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Hannah. Um, so, yeah, like I'll, I'll echo what everybody else has been saying uh, in terms of uh, there's a lot of concerns being raised, um, office has been spoken. So just had a couple of questions um, for you. So the occupational site has now um, uh, has, has, um, been taken place. With all the conditions uh, being removed, um, reference to prior occupation, um, could I just ask why is this um, deemed to now not to be needed and why there is a proposal to the amend um, those conditions, please? Thank you. Thank you, Muna. Hey, uh, yeah. um, so the conditions that have been altered are mainly because they've now submitted the information. So a lot of the conditions required information to be submitted before occupation. Um, that information has been submitted, so we no longer need to word it prior to occupation. Um, it's rather that they have to do it in accordance with the details um, before a certain stage, depending on the um, development, um, on the condition even. So, for example, the bin store for the flats was originally worded as prior to occupation that we provided. Um, but that's not actually reasonable because there's no need for the bin store until the flats are occupied themselves. Um, so we've looked carefully at the wording of each condition and that's why um, they've been amended. And um, with regards to occupation of the site currently, um, that is a matter we're looking at separately. Um, that's not under consideration under this application um, and it hasn't influenced the conditions for this at all. And um, the word rewording has been due to looking at whether what's reasonable um, for the site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Anna. Anyone else got any questions, please, to ask of Anna? No? Right, thank you. No one's right. asking. Thank you, Maisie. Right, comments and committee. Calling for comments. Councillor Burtz, Jane. Oh, thank you, Chair. I find this a really, really difficult um, application and uh, the conditions are in a many and they're very complex I could only support this if I had really firm assurance that these conditions which I think Hannah's worked very hard to improve on um, I could only support this if you know we could have some assurance that these will be um, undertaken and that the you know the agent and the developer will will stick to them because it seems as if every um, sort of loophole has been, um, you know, not exploited, but pushed to the limits so far. And I don't think that's right when this is such a controversial, such a, um, you know, the wildlife that's, the, the effect on the wildlife is so um, delicate. Um, you know, is there any way that we can have some assurance that these conditions will be met and that the um, improvements that are in in these conditions will actually take place. Oh, I'll come on to it. Uh, that uh, then would perhaps bring Peter into it. Then I would just want to get if there's any more committee members got any comments to ask because this has been, I think, this is one of the most thoroughly intensive debated applications that I've ever come across. And uh, credit to everybody, the fashion speakers, and uh, particularly Anna in presenting this report. But anyway, anybody go else got any comments to ask? Councillors Russell and Brian Markham are indicating. Councillor Russell, Catherine. Thank you. My comment is, is that the site itself and the, in the diagrams that Hannah shared, it looked as if every possible inch of this area, this development is going to be landscaped. And Councillor Walker raised the issue as did Councillor Roberts and I think um, Councillor Davenport raised the issue about potential flooding and the, the kind of problems that are faced there. And it seems to me that this, that whatever attempts there are for soakaways and to, to reduce any excess water um, may well be um, 
met with uh, landscaping and, and areas where the water can't run away. Right, thank you, Catherine. Councillor Markham, Brian. Brian, are you there? Councillor Markham? Mute, yes. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, I thought I had unmuted. First of all, I, I think um, the uh, Hannah as um, the presentation from the officer was excellent, and I also think actually comments from the, the, the speeches and and the, the way questions were answered were excellent as well. It's been a very long discussion, um, but we also have to look back to not only Hannah's presentation but the report and most importantly the addendum which largely covers some of the issues around um, the budget sets and so on. Uh, uh, Councillor Russell just mentioned landscaping uh, on site but of course as I understand it and the topic there's land adjacent to that site which is not being built on. Um, some of it I think is in the ownership of, of the, the the developer but it's not being developed um and some of the badges forage live or whatever around there i, I did have concerns um, when i read received the uh papers at the end of last week or um and i think the and also the comments from the um uh, councillors in particular previously I do think the addendum that I read today and the discussion we've had tonight answers 99% of those questions. And we have to remember these, it, these are changes to conditions to something that is being built, will be built. And to my mind, the discussion we've had tonight, the changes to the conditions can only improve matters and discussions with the developers and the council um, uh, natural England and so on uh, uh, regarding the future of badges on and near the site. I think that will continue. I'm glad to hear that. So I, I think the uh, the officers have done a very good job on this. Um, I remind people that those houses are being built. Previous conditions such as the crossing have been provided. The front of the site has been the the um, roundabouts been built um, to satisfaction. I think you know things are far better thanks to very hard work from um, from the planning department over the years mm -hmm. on this. And the homes will be welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah, so thank I you, support Brian. it. Thank you, Brian. Um, just from my personal point of view, I think the councillors, the three councillors, have done sterling work, and quite frankly, they've uh, really endeavour to represent the constituents as, as really well and explain uh, their situation within the limitations of three minutes. The fact of, of uh, planning, <laughs> it's never very friendly at times. Um, we have to focus on the planning situation uh, committee. There's moral and uh, principal reasons, arguments that sometimes planning conditions and regulations fly in the face of. But this is a, a very extensive report. The conditions have been put in, the amendments have been made. Um, to me, on the planning side of things, if you look at the major consultees that's been um, uh, you know, con consulted on, the Lead Local Flood Authority, Anglian Water, Natural England, Environment Agency, might all have problems with them, not agree with them. But from a planning perspective is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if it went down the tube for some reason, I think it would be very difficult to, um, shall we, substantiate under a planning inspector's uh, investigation. Uh, before I call for the vote, Peter, is there anything that you'd like to mention before I do that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. If I could just clarify that issue about the conditions. Um, it's an allocated site. It's got planning permission. What you're being asked to look at is a variation um, the Act allows for that, so you know, this is an appropriate function. Um, I urge members to consider that. We haven't 
had much discussion about the recent history, which has been good. But in my opinion, the conditions which are proposed in the report and the addendum meet all of the tests and in particular um, would be enforceable if there is any breach of those. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Well, as I say, it's been well debated really through and through and very extensively reported and, dis and uh, presented by Anna. Thank you for that. Committee, we are at the situation now to uh, do, do we accept the recommendation of the officer's approval in principle on this report? Councillor Lane, Jamie, yes. Yeah, I'd like to propose you accept the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much, Jamie. Do I have a seconder, please? Do I have a seconder? Councillor Brian Markham's no, indicated. Councillor Brian Markham's indicated seconder. Okay, so on that proposal from Councillor Lane and seconded by Councillor. Uh, Mark and Brian Markham, all committee. Those in favour of accepting the officer's recommendation, please raise your hands. Six hands. Six. Six voting for. Okay, those against. There's no. No against. Abstentions? There must be some abstentions. There's one abstention. One abstention. So I've got seven votes there. Is that right? I thought we'd be down to nine people totally. We've got six, four. Those who voted four, can you put your hands up again, please? I've got five on my screen. Eight. I've counted right. eight this time, Chair. Thank you. That I'll accept that because that is nine people. So, okay, there's eight, four, one abstention. So on that basis, the application is approved. Thank you very, very much. Well, that was a very detailed and uh, debated, uh, highly debated application thank you right Jack, can i on. ask that make sorry Jack, could i just have Maisie re-admits councillor king please oh sure absolutely yeah thank you peter for that tell me when you've done that Maisie, please is she readmitted There's no one in the waiting room chair. I don't think Councillor King's in the meeting. No, she's, she's not in the meeting. No, Councillor King's not in the waiting room either. OK, well, we're going to start on item 10B and she won't be able to join it to, when this application gets on the way. OK, item 10B, the location committee, is on, which is on page 53 of your agenda, is uh, Seven Laurel Valley. It's for an extension of existing detached garage to, garage to create self-contained annex. If you've seen it, it's retrospective. Excuse me, this is. You've seen it on your agendas. Um, Nikki, this is your uh, report. Would you like to present it? Excuse me, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just draw members' attention to the addendum. There's additional comments re received from a third party um, maintaining concern yeah. about that a reasonable requirement's not been given to yeah. the need for the annex and referring to um, the poorly maintained laurels um, disagree that that breaks up the mass of the, the building. So this is the, the application site here. Um, it's within a residential area. You've got Colling Tree golf course to the east of the site. The garage and annex in question is, is, is just here, um, borders the, the boundaries of neighbouring properties and, and set back from the, the front of the existing dwelling. In terms of there'll be reference to a, a window that's to be bricked up and that window's on this, this um, elevation here. Also reference to the laurel hedge, um, which is along this boundary here. This is just an aerial view of the site. 
So these are the, the floor plans. Uh, the, the garage retains the, um, there was a previous approval, uh, approval for the garage some years ago. The existing application retains the, the previously approved footprint and that ground floor would be retained in use as a garage. This is the first floor. So this, this is the self-contained annex area. It's a self-contained living area with, with kitchen facilities and a separate shower room. And then an external staircase. This is situated within the, the applicant's garden, providing access to the, the first floor annex. In respect of the, the annex itself, whilst, whilst it does provide self-contained accommodation, the, the application has been submitted as um, providing ancillary accommodation for the, the applicant's son, and at times when, when parents are visiting to provide accommodation for, for them. Currently, it's the, the applicant's son that um, is residing in the property just to, in, in order for him to, to, to stay at home, essentially, for, for a longer period of time. So this shows you the elevation with the staircase within the, the garden area. And this is the, the, the front of the annex with a, a dormer window to the, to the annex accommodation above. You can see the garage here from garage and annex from a distant shot. Again, this is closer up. You can see the, the hedging to the, the side of the property and the, the, the laurel trees are, are just behind there. And also the, the applicant is um, intending to gate across. You can see that the, the pillars are in and the gate will be going across in, in closing that. So, so access to the annex itself would be through those gates and, and through the, the, the garden of the, the property. So as such, in, in essence, in, to ensure that the, the annex does remain ancillary, condition two of the planning report um, seeks to ensure that, that it remains ancillary to the house and, and to, to occupiers associated with um, the, the application property. This is just a view from the garden showing the staircase up to the annex. This is a view of the, the rear of the property, and this is the side elevation that faces towards the, the neighbouring properties that I showed you. There is currently a, a, a window in this first floor elevation. Um, officers have, have sought to, to seek removal of that window. It's currently obscure glazed, and there were discussions about the, the window being fixed shut to, to avoid concerns regarding overlooking. However, as you'll see when I go through the photos, that there's still, because of the proximity to neighbouring boundaries, there was still an office concern about the perception of overlooking of, of a neighbouring garden. Um, hence, there, there is a requirement for the development to be carried out in accordance with these plans, which seeks to have that window blocked up. Um, and should the application be approved, in, enforcement would agree an appropriate time scale for that work to be carried out. So that's the rear elevation there. This is the view from the neighbouring garden. These are the, the laurel trees that are at the mansion. So whilst they're, they're filling to some degree um, and you can still get views, they, they do obscure an element of, of the proposed building. In terms of the increase in height of the building, it's gone up 0.8 metres from, from what was previously approved. You can just about make out there. There's um, that. That's the offending window that um, would we're seeking to be bricked up. This is a distant um, view. So this is from the the, the neighbouring property's patio, and this is the, the garage here. Um, the distance from the back of this neighbouring property, from the the rear elevation to the side of the garage, is, is approximately 27 metres. But as you can see, it's a, the, the whole of the garden is used and due to the proximity of that window to the garden, it was considered there would be a, um, an element of unacceptable overlooking. This is the view out of the, the window towards the, towards the, the neighbouring garden. Um, so officer's opinion is that subject to, um, I would say that, that the amended plans will be conditioned. So um, officer's re recommendation is that the amended scheme is acceptable and the design appearance in, and use is considered acceptable and therefore the applications recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much. Right, we have one speaker on this uh, application. I, I call Mr. Richard Gartside, please. Mr. Gartside, are you with us? Hi, yes. can you hear me? I can and I can see you. 
So, uh, okay, so like sorry, to, first time at a Zoom meeting, so. No, that's all right. If you'd like to identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Uh, I'm Richard Gartside and I'm speaking as the applicant. Good, thank you. So you have three minutes, Mr Gartside, please. Thank you. Okay, firstly, I would like to apologise to the committee for carrying out the works to our property without first gaining planning permission. We were not aware we would need to gain planning approval for the works we have carried out. The building as it now stands is on the original footprint with the same aspect and build form and on moving into the property in October 2013, the sales particulars indicated there already was a self-contained annex in the room above the garage which encompassed a bathroom and a kitchen. We were not aware we would need to submit for planning again as we generally felt we were simply renovating and updating the amenity and benefit that we already had. And as such, um, we engaged uh, building regulations and submitted for building regs approval to gain final building control sign off in the spring of 2019. There is no ulterior motive as to why these works were omitted from our planning application of 2017. Our rationale for carrying out these works are very pure. My wife and I spent the best part of 10 years wishing to move to Collingtree Park and as such made decisions and choices to allow this to become a reality in the autumn of 2013. And we have spent the last seven years making where we live into our forever home. The sympathetic works we have carried out have been done to match this wish and we have no desire to sell on or profit from the end result after all the hard work and effort we have gone to. We also have no wish to detract or erode in any way what first attracted us to the area. As stated in the covering letter to our planning application, the simple drivers behind these works are to provide and add the same feel of order to us by the main house to the existing amenity of the annex, as is our wish to allow our sons the ability to extend their stay within the family home whilst also extending the benefit to other members of our family. In March 2020, we were approached by the Planning Enforcement Officer James Willoughby following a complaint we've received from any one household. Our visiting our home with his line manager, both the Enforcement Officer felt that the works we've been carried out were in keeping with our home and <coughs> complemented us on the end result. However, they advised a retrospective planning application would be beneficial and went on further to assist us with structuring our application. They indicated that we complied with all relevant planning policies and muted we should easily gain planning approval. We submitted our planning application, had no idea of the fury that had been going on until two weeks before the initial determination date in June. When we were approached by the planning officer who made us aware of issues being generated by Mr and Mrs Taylor of One Tanglewood. As a result of their extensive political contacts, Mr and Mrs Taylor have set about using them to further voice their dislike of our application, whilst also issuing formal complaints against the planning officer and Northampton Building Control. The facts remain, the build form of the current building differs very little from what was constructed in 2000. The distance between the side elevation of the garage and annex and the elevation of the extension to the rear of Mr and Mrs Taylor's property is 30 metres. It's three from our side and 27 from theirs. Whilst well, noting that one tanglewood sits in an elevated position, approximately two, higher than, uh, two metres higher than the Seven Laurel Valley. Our application is supported by the planning department. The current building and use conforms within parameters of local and national building poli uh, planning policy. What has been constructed is in keeping with the local area. The massing of the building has not changed and as such we feel there's no detriment to the local built environment. The only loss of privacy is to our home is resulting from the actions carried out by Mr and Mrs Taylor on the 13th of June, ahead of Nikki's uh, uh, meeting with them, to the hedging and fencing between our two properties. The mood lighting that Councillor Larratt makes reference to is nothing more than security lighting, and we are also in the process of installing security cameras and procuring new replacement entrance gates to our drive. We are comforted by the report put together by Nikki Scaife, uh, submitted to this committee, supporting our application for approval. I'm sure. Richard, okay. thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you could just remain with us in case the committee's got any questions to ask of you. Committee, thank any you. questions to ask of Mr Gartside, please? No, no one has indicated. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Major. Thank you, Mr. Gartside. Thank uh, you. And Nikki, do you want to come back on anything that Mr. Gartside's uh, raised? No, not, nothing to add, Chair. Um, just uh, other than to reiterate that the planning regulations do allow for the submission of, of retrospective planning applications. Okay, I'll, with that, I'll call upon the committee. If you've got any questions to ask of Nikki, please. Anybody got any questions to ask of Nikki, please? No? No one is indicated. Thank you. Right. Uh, any comments? We're on to comments now. Uh, I've got Councillor Lane, Jamie, and Councillor Goldby, Matt. Councillor Lane, Jamie? I'll let Councillor Goldby go first. So I was going to to recommend we approve the officer's recommendation. Okay, okay. Councillor Goldby, Matt? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I was just going to say I was satisfied with um, the explanation Mr Gartside gave there, and I, um, I'm happy to propose we accept the officer's recommendations. Okay. Not wishing to, anybody else got any comments before I pass it on to Jamie to say that he'd second it. Is everybody else happy with that? I have a proposition then from Councillor Goldby. 
seconded by Councillor Lane, that we accept the officer's recommend recommendation and approve this application. All those in favour, raise their hands, please. Eleven. Eleven. Did you say eleven, uh, Maisie? Should be ten, Maisie. Sorry. I was going to say. There's ten. Uh, sorry, I counted someone. Has Councillor King come back then? Yeah. Okay. So there's ten. So that's unanimous, I believe. Nobody abstaining or against on that, I don't believe. You're correct, Chair. So it's votes or unanimous. Okay, that's that application is approved. Thank you very much, committee. Thank you. Thank you, committee, and thank you to the planners. That's all right, Mr. Gottside. Thank you. Right, committee, we now come on to item 10C. Uh, the location is uh, Milton Ham Farm at Toaster Road. Once again, it's quite a few variations of conditions. Page 61 on your agenda. I'm not going to uh, go through it. Um, uh, Anna, this is your presentation, I believe, a report. Would you like to pre present it, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, so the application is to vary conditions, um, mainly to enlarge Unit 1, add an exercise trail, and alter conditions to be in accordance with new details um, as submitted. Um, so again, we do have an addendum item for this, which we've hopefully seen. Um, the lead local flood authority clarified that they have no objection. Um, one additional neighbour objection was received, but it didn't raise planning matters that could be considered. The gatehouse plan has been updated, so we um, are recommending that the new reference number is used in the plans condition. Um, details have been submitted for construction environment management plan and levels. Um, they've been um, confirmed as acceptable by highways and it's therefore recommended that conditions four and six be amended to be in accordance with the details. They've also amended the materials to be a grey scale as opposed to a green scale and um, again um, recommending changing that condition. So it's con changing conditions two, four, six and seven to be in accordance with the new details. So this is the application site. Um, located just to the north of the M1. Um, this roundabout is in place and it already has an access point um, built for this site. And you can see neighbouring residential properties to the north. Again, just an area of view. So you can see the residential properties um, and the M1 is just where this white line is. Um, just some um, 3D aerial views to try and make it a bit clearer. So you've got the M1, you've got that existing access point. This is the site, and then you can see the neighboring properties. And then just looking back from those neighboring properties, so you can see the access point there. The M1 is um, approximately there. This is the exact existing access point I mentioned off that roundabout, so it is in place. Um, the approved plan was for three units, so you had one unit to the north of the site and then two units which are um, joined to each other to the south of the site. Um, the proposal is to enlarge unit one. Um, so it gets 30 metres wider and it also gets half a metre taller. As a result, the parking layout has changed slightly, but there are um, more parking spaces. Um, and this line is indicating an exercise trail that they're um, proposing to put in for their workers. I'll just show you that first. Um, so it's a nice um, route for um, relaxation exercise for the staff. The units two and three to the south of site that I showed you, the only change is that they become grayscale um, material wise. That's the only change to those buildings. These are the approved plans for unit one. And if I show you unit, the amended plans, um, you can see they appear largely the same. Again, the only change is they get 30 metres wider um, and half a metre taller. On the next slide, I have a comparison. 
So the building you can see is what's now proposed. The blue dotted line is what was approved and what they are now varying. So you can see it gets slightly wider and ever so slightly taller. The orange dotted line is what was previously um, refused and dismissed at appeal in 2015 application. Um, you can see that the proposed scheme is significantly smaller still than this refusal um, and is not um, that much larger than what has been approved and can be built on the site. Um, paragraph 7.8 of the report goes through in detail the different sizes if you wanted to look at that in more detail. Um, these show the bund. Um, so there's a bund proposed around the northern and eastern edge of the um, buildings to help um, screen the development. The bonds proposed to remain the same as previously approved. Um, so the building would be half a meter taller than it was previously. The orange line, if you can see it, is what's approved and the building itself is what's proposed. So you can see it's a um, very small difference to be able to see. So it's considered the bond would still um, screen this and you can see this is where it's been wider. So the building would have ended there, but it now ends here, but the bond still screens that building. Um, if I just show you these photos, so the developers provided um, plans showing what's, what's, uh, what's approved and what's now proposed. So approved is the top photo and proposed is the bottom. You can see the building doesn't look that much different. That's from the north and um, western side. I'll just run through these quickly. Um, from the road, again, approved, proposed, it doesn't look significantly different. Um, from further along near the houses, um, approved and then proposed. Again, not much difference. And um, this one you can see a slight difference. So this is from the east where it's um gets slightly wider. So there's the building, and then you can see a slight crest of the roof there. But still, the bun screens the most majority. <coughs> um, and also from near the M1 and um, from the field, and um, the building's actually over here. Um, again, you can't, you still can't really see it because of the bond. Um, and one final one, um, the building is behind here. You can't, you can't see it really. Slight difference. Um, it is considered that the amendments would not significantly alter the um, scene from that approved. It would be half a metre taller and 30 metres wider. However, the appearance would still be of a warehouse and um, the site is allocated for such. Um, it's not considered that the amendments would have an unacceptable impact upon the site or neighboring amenity or ecology or highways from what's previously been approved. It's therefore recommended that the scheme is approved in principle, subject to a section 106, which requires the same provisions as within the section 106 for the original scheme. The reason is the section 106 in the original scheme does not tie to variations, so we need another section 106. But this is to provide contributions towards transport, the bond, um, construction training, and a monitoring fee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Anna. Uh, right, we have two speakers on this uh, application committee, and I call upon the first one, Mr. Andy Lord, please. Uh, Andy, I, I, I can see you. I, I, you if you just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Uh, yeah, my name's Andy Lord. I'm uh, representing the adjacent landowner who are Clayson Country Homes. Uh, I have three minutes, thank you. Thank you. Um, as I said, my name's Andy Lord. Um, I'm representing the adjacent landowner who are Clayson Country Homes. We own the site immediately to the east of the property. Uh, the application site in question. Um, so our site would be um, seen on some of the photographs that you saw most pertinently, there were horses in one, so to give you some context. Um, critically, we provide the storm water outfall for the application site. When you looked at the red line, there were red bars coming across and that's our site. And we have got a, le a legal agreement with the applicant for storm and foul outfalls. Um, there is some sensitivity with flood risk uh, in the area. Um, essentially, 
we don't object to the majority of the conditions that are being proposed. And as a fellow developer, I would support them if, um, if that gets them the best value out of the site, absolutely. But there are two conditions that I, rather than objecting, I would like to seek clarification on, and they are condition 20 and condition 22. Um, the simple clarification is as such that we would like to be no more uh, pressure on the submitted flood risk than the one that was previously approved. And what I'm saying there is I don't want any more pressure on our, our site. The site in question is allocated for 180 plots in the draft part two allocation. We're going to be bringing for that residential application the back end of this year, the early part of next year. Um, so clearly, we don't want any more pressure on our residential site. Um, and one point, the submitted details are for a swale, but we believe legally the applicant needs to provide a, a drainage sewer underground. Um, I am in discussion with the applicant over that, and I, I would hope that we can seek to resolve that between ourselves. So um, thank you for your time, and um, I, I can answer any questions. If any, well, on, on that, I, I will ask the committee if they've got any questions to ask of you, Mr Lord. Committee, do you've got any questions to ask of Mr. Lord, please? No? No one's indicating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Thank you very much. And I call upon uh, Mr. Jonathan Best, please. Mr. Best, are you with us? No. Yes, I am. My name is Jonathan Best. I'm from Montague Evans, and I'm the planning consultant for the applicant. Thank you, you have three minutes, thank you very much. This planning application is to amend planning permission N 2018 which I shall refer to as the 2018 permission. The principal change is to increase the size of unit one. Planning applications should be determined in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The scheme subject to the 2018 permission and the current application is for a warehouse development this accords with the allocation both the development plan and the emerging part two local plan. Accordingly, there is a presumption in favour of granting permission for the application. The scheme maintains the same design approach as the 2018 permission. It reduces the ground levels within the site and creates a lower floor level and raises the boundary levels to reduce the effect of the development on the surrounding area. In accordance with the MPPF, the scheme makes a more efficient use of the site and means that uh, it will be better suited to meeting occupier needs and generate additional business rates. It should generate additional employment in accordance with policies of the Joint Structure Plan and the introduction of improved staff welfare services such as the Trim Trail should help attract blue chip occupiers. Whilst there have been objections to the application, statutory consultees and your officers have recognised that the scheme is acceptable in terms of residential amenity, design, flood risk, transport, as well as the natural and historic environment. Crucially, the scheme is also acceptable in visual impact terms. Accordingly, it's my view that the scheme accords with the development plan and brings significant benefits whilst addressing potential impacts. The section 106 um, is unchanged in essence with the 2018 permission. The conditions cover the same matters as the 2018 application, uh, but are simply updated to relate to the current scheme and uh, additional information. If approved, the application, uh, the implementation of the application development will begin shortly. It will be a significant investment in a crucial sector of the economy as the nation emerges from COVID lockdown. As such, the investment and jobs will help ensure resilience of the Northampton economy. Um, just quickly in relation to the last speaker, um, the, uh, the drainage scheme is um, the same strategy, the same approach as the 2018 Commission. It's just been adapted to uh, the larger building. Uh, it has been approved or uh, signed off by the flood authority. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mr. Best, the three minutes is up. Uh, if you just remain uh, with us. Um, committee, any questions to ask of Mr. Best, please? Councillor Birch, Jane, I've seen you, Catherine. I'll come to you in a minute. Look, thank you. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. Best, can you confirm that you've had conversations with um, Andy Lord about conditions uh, 20 and 22? Mr. Best, are you with us? He needs to unmute. Me, Sorry, Mr. Uh, Best. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I believe Mr. Lord has been in, in contact with my clients directly today. Uh, but before that, I'm not aware of any contact from uh, from from Clayson's. So today okay. was the first day we heard about it. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Russell, Catherine. Thank you. Um, this this part of the world is incredibly busy with huge vehicles coming off the M1 and other vehicles heading onto the M1 at this particular juncture. And that roundabout, the, the road um, leading onto the roundabout and away from it is actually quite narrow. It's barely two lanes, especially if you've got a huge um, 38 wheel vehicle in front of you, whatever they are. Um, what, what, what mitigation is there going to be in place to ensure that we haven't got traffic backed up um, on three area, three of the exits of that roundabout? Um, I don't believe there will be any um, uh, un unacceptable backing up on the roundabout or, or any other roads. Um, the, the original 2018 application was subject to a full transport assessment, uh, which was accepted by both the County Council and Highways England, uh, and the current application includes an update of that um, and again there's no objection on transport or, or highways grounds. Um, indeed the, uh, the 2015 application which went to appeal although that was uh, dismissed that wasn't dismissed on, on transport grounds it was, it was visual impact alone so um, a, a scheme which was far larger was actually acceptable in transport terms on the site. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions of Mr. Best, please? No? I want to indicate. Right. Thank you, Mr. Best. Um, Anna, do you want to come back on anything that's been said by the speakers? Uh, Thank before you, that? Yeah, go on. Thank you. Um, just to confirm that the Environment Agency and Leeds Local File Authority were consulted on the application and raise no objection. Um, and also Highways England and NCC Highways were consulted on the amended scheme and again, no objections were received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. What, what about the thing, uh, the conditions 20 and 22 uh, that Mr. Lord raised? They, they still standing and they, uh, 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 there are no amendments to them, is there? Um, yes, Chair. Um, so conditions 20 and 22, the new conditions, um, have been reworded to be in accordance with details submitted um, mm. because um, the lead local file authority um, recommended that they could be, that the details submitted were acceptable. Um, mm. So they have been reworded to be in accordance with details, but they still have to undertake it in accordance with those. Um, so the right. only change is not requiring the details anymore because they've been accepted. All right, thank you. Chair, Committee, do you have... Chair, Chair, if I could yeah. just clarify. Um, what you're being asked to consider is the impact of the development before you tonight. Um, whilst I understand the neighbours desire to protect the drainage capacity for the future development of their site, that's not a material consideration in this. So we're not going to enter into any agreement between the two in a condition. The condition relates solely to the development you're looking at tonight. Thank you. Yeah, but that... That's, that's, yeah, that's what I was uh, questioning Anna on, the fact the conditions that apply to this application as it is, Peter. Yeah. Uh, what's down the line is down the line, and we'll cross that when it comes. Um, anyway, uh, any more, anybody got else, anybody else got any questions to ask of Anna before I go to comments, committee? No? No? Nobody got any? No one's indicating, sure. Right, we've got a comment. So the only comments that uh, I, I will start off on this, I mean, as uh, as the Ward Councillor, I've had quite a bit of contact uh, which from people over the uh, months and so forth about this uh, development since its inception, attempted inception in 2015. Um, some people have asked me, well, why is this land 
we're going to have big warehouses on. Uh, why didn't they build houses? Well, because this land's been designated for commercial use only for years. With regards to the um, original application, which I did speak against uh, and voted against because it was too big, it trespassed onto green space. This particular, since the amendments have, have, have taken place uh, in 2018 and, and the present one, does not trespass onto the green space. I was particularly keen to see that the football pitches were not going to be uh, trespassed on. And there's no traffic, industrial traffic going down uh, from Shelfley uh, down to the site from that end. The thing that uh, Councillor Russell mentioned about the highways, uh, the access into uh, the site from the motorway, I've been quietly satisfied that it will be wide enough and it will not cause any tailbacks, even though I can understand the question. Highways are not objecting. To talk about the, um, the size of the property that was um, dis uh, dismissed on appeal, that was 46,651 square metres. The present one, even though with this increase, is 32,998 square metres. It is not uh, in keeping with what the inspector was saying on the original one. It is considerably smaller. Um, the conditions that um, that's in there are quite satisfactory to me. The thing that um, I was concerned about the, the, with the increase of the roof height, that the environment agency, the, the runoff, um, how that would be affected. That was a concern, uh, but the environment agency have raised no objections. And to me, uh, there's nothing we can do about that when a lead consultancy like the environment agency and the local, uh, the local lead flood authority have got no problems with it. Um, as regards for the noise and things that the West Country Parish Council have raised with noise vehicles, materials, light and traffic congestion, well, they happen on any development. But I would be pleased to see development on this site get moving. So all in all, um, taking everything into consideration, and I've considered it um, personally for quite some time, I'm quite happy with the variation order and I'm quite happy to support it. So that's me. Councillor Lane, what you got your hand up? I'm oh, sorry, was that your hand up, Councillor Lane? No, I was... I was oh, sorry. Sorry. I'll make okay, thank you. Anybody else got any comments, please? No? No one's, no one's indicated. indicated. Right, thank you, Maisie. So therefore, it falls upon me now to say, right, the officer's recommendation is that we accept uh, the variation of the conditions and prove them in principle. Uh, I go uh, retrospectively to your hand, uh, Jamie, the, that is a your hands up for a proposal that we accept the officer's recommendation. Councillor Birch, are you seconding the fact of the officer's recommendation? Yes? Okay, so all those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation to approve this application. Ten. Ten hands. So that's unanimous, I believe, is it not? Anybody against or abstaining? No, that was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for that. So with that, the application is approved. Thank you, committee, and thank you, speakers. Thank you very much. All right, we now come on to item 10D, committee. 10D is at two, the location is two Lanacos Walk and it's an adjustment of a fence line along Keswick Drive to make it two metres closer to pavement to increase the size of the back garden. Um, Nicky, this is your report. Would you like to present it, please? Uh, Chair, Chair, I, I will need to... No, you, you, you've gone muted. You've got to unmute yourself, Brian. Right. I, I need to leave the meeting for a few moments, so I'll miss this item. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you we'll for that. that. Thank you. Right. Uh, sorry, Nikki. Would you like to present it, please? Your report. Thank you, Chair. So this is the application site. It's a corner plot in a residential area. You've got Lanacost Walk, 
um, line across there and then Keswick Drive across the top. Just an aerial view of the site. So fairly open plan site, but it has altered over the years and you, you've, you've got increased existing boundary treatments um, and mature vegetation that have um, cropped up over the years. So this is the proposal. It's essentially to extend this fence boundary out um, two meters out from the front there and then 4.87 meters at the back. We have sought amendments to the to the fence line just to ensure um, that the neighboring property has got a driveway there. So we've sought amendments to slide the fence in to ensure there's vehicle visibility displays on that side. And also at the junction of, of Lanacost there, um, because you, you've also got a bus stop there, which um, adds to obscuring visibility to a degree. But there would still be a reasonable setback maintained from, from the footway with, with the proposed fencing. Um, it would be a 1.8 meter close board fencing. This just shows the, the site as it is now. So you can see the, the neighboring drive. So similarly to how the fence is angled, we'd, we'd be looking for the fence to be angled again to maintain visibility and, and on the opposite side. Um, fence there again, and you can see that there's, there's quite mature vegetation there and, and again, alterations to boundary treatment. So it's, although most of it's still open plan, it's slightly less open plan than, than previously. And just another view there. So, Officer um, opinion is that the uh, uh, amended fence line is considered acceptable and therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, committee, there's no speakers on this, so it's questions straight into Nikki if there are any. Has anybody got any questions to ask of Nikki, please? No? Oh, Councillor Birch, Jane. Councillor Birch, you've got all muted. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Nikki, does the applicant own that patch of land? Yes, they do. Yeah, it, it, it's not highway land. It's owned by the applicant. Okay, thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Nikki, please? No? <clears throat> okay. No one's in Thank you, Maisie. Comments then, committee? Any comments, please? No? Do I have a, in that case, do I have As the a, King was indicating, Chair. I do beg your pardon. Sorry. That's I okay. Know. Thank you, Chair. I was just going to say that um, obviously they've maintained the outside of their um, wall so well. The grass looks amazing. Um, it's a shame that they can't have it actually inside their own boundary. So, yeah, I'd like to propose we move to the vote on it. Well, if there's anybody else who wants to make any comments, I'm quite happy to do that. Councillor Lane, were you trying to presume that? I was going to second Councillor King's proposal. Councillor Russell, the you hand up, was you going to vote uh, in, in accordance with Councillor King and Councillor Lane? Yes, I was going to second. Okay, right. Well, we have a proposer and a seconder um, for this uh, application that we accept the officer's report uh, uh, for approval. All those in favour, please, show of hands. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so before I go on to 10E, is Councillor Markham, Brian Markham, ready to come back in? There's nobody in the waiting room, Councillor Oldham. Um, no? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come in. All right. Am I? I'm... I'm Maisie, can you help me? If he's trying, or Tracy, if he's trying to come in, why is he kept out? Councillor Markham may have lost connection. He's now disappeared completely. Really? Oh, well, we shall have to get on 10E. Um, so look out for him. But as we start, he'll have to stay in the waiting room, unfortunately, for this one. Uh, the location of this 10E is at 12 Cranstone Street. It's a change of use from a dwelling house. Uh, Class C3 to house in multiple occupation, class C4 for four occupants. Um, this is, Rita, I believe, this is your uh, report on page 89. Would you like to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, 
Thank you. Yes, um, this is an application for a change of view from a dwelling house to a house in multi-occupation for four persons. Uh, we have uh, information in our addendum, uh, additional comments from the Highway Authority. Uh, they have no objection to the application, but pointed out that the area is a permit zone for parking. This is the application site. As you can see, is a terrace property uh, to the east of Cranston Street. Um, uh, the area is of similar um, design and height uh, and use in the area. Just an area photograph and you can see uh, the parkings uh, on street, uh, but it's permit parking in the area. So the application is for uh, a change of use uh, from existing three bedroom dwellings. As you can see for the first floor, there are three bedroom currently with a lounge, dining room and kitchen uh, with a shower and toilet at the, at the back. With a proposal, with a proposed plan, uh, the only change is uh, there will be a ground floor bedroom to the front. The lounge and kitchen will be knocked through, you can see there and then the toilet and shower will remain. So those, there will be three uh, bedroom to, to the first floor. It's just um, some photographs of some of the rooms. As you can see, this is the fun room will be uh, become one of the bedrooms. So this is the kitchen and lounge area. You can see it's been knocked through uh, and linked together. This is the kitchen. Uh, you can see the shower and the toilet is on the other side um, on the ground floor. So this is just, uh, I can show you the shower uh, in the shower room. So uh, rear elevation of the property, um, the rear garden. This is the first floor uh, or the bedrooms. You can see they are of reasonable size bedrooms and outlook. So in terms of concentration um, with this uh, to be included uh, will be 4.4%. That will be still within the 10% limit uh, in, in the uh, current SPD. In terms of parking, as County Highways has pointed out, it is a permit area. Private sector housing has no objection to the application and consider that the facility will be uh, satisfactory for four occupants. There will be uh, room for bin store and bike store and appropriate condition has been suggested and contained in the report. Uh, the site is within a sustainable location uh, near to the tank center and, and the area will still provide a sufficient or adequate mix of housing in the area. So the um, recommend recommendation therefore chair is for approval thank you uh, thank you rita um well we have no speakers on this committee anybody got any questions to ask of rita please so the king sorry Mason didn't catch that councillor king councillor king anna yeah please yeah thank you chair um Rita, are you right in concern? There's one shower and one toilet for four bedrooms. Yeah. Through you, Chair, that's correct. Um, it's the same as the existing situation. So that there, there is a, sh a shower, there's a sink inside the shower room, a separate toilet uh, with a sink inside the uh, toilet uh, areas as well. Okay. Well, anyone else got any questions to ask of Rita, please? Councillor Birch, Jane. Got to unmute yourself, Jane. Jane, got to unmute yeah. yourself. Yeah, no, I found my mouse, that's fine. Huh? Um, Rita, can you confirm that the, sh the basin is already in the toilet or is that to go in at a later date? Um, th three chairs, sorry. Yes, the, 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 the shower room has already got a sink, but the, the toilet will have a sink to go in afterwards because I believe that was added to the planned 
uh, subsequently. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions to ask me ask the reader, please? No? Nobody indicating? Okay. Right. Question. Uh, sorry. Comments, committee. Any comments, please? <coughs> Excuse me. No? Councillor Lane. There's Again. no comment. I propose to accept the offer recommendation. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that, please? Councillor Kilby Shaw, Sam, thank you. All those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval? Somebody tell me? Seven, Chair. Seven, four. Thank you. Um, any against? No, okay. No. <coughs> any abstentions? Two abstentions. Two abstentions. That would be right with nine committee members. Thank you. So that uh, is approved on a seven for, for the recommendation and two abstentions. Thank you very much, committee. We now come on to item. Oh, by the way, has Councillor Markham got back in? Brian, has he got back in? I will readmit him now. He's back into the waiting room. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Let me know when you've done that, if he's back in. Councillor is now rejoined. Thank you. Welcome back, Brian. Thank you. Right, we're on item 10F. I'm on the right procedure. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, okay. We're on item 10F, page 97, 18 Talbot Road. Once again, it's a high mo. It's a change of use from a dwelling house to a house in multiple occupation for four occupants. Um, this, I believe, is yours again, Rita. Would you present your report, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, this is another application to change of use to a four-person uh, high mole. Um, you can see this is the application site, another a terrace property. Just an area photograph of that. So this is the property in question, as you can see. I just want to show you there's a window to the basement uh, in that position. Uh, there's no external alteration proposed for this application. Uh, so currently it is a two bedroom house uh, with two bedroom above and a bathroom. Uh, there is the lounge, kitchen and sitting room and also a, a basement room there. This is the proposal. Uh, for basement, we'll, they will, uh, it will be used for a lounge or a diner there. Uh, that's the kitchen to the rear. So there are two bedrooms to be proposed on the ground floor. On the first floor, again, there will be two bedrooms and the bathroom. So for this one, there's only one bathroom to serve uh, the four, four, four occupants. Um, just want to quickly show you some of the photos. So this is one of the bedrooms. You can see this is the rear garden. So this is the uh, basement room. Um, just to show you um, that is the um, window I pointed out earlier um, for the uh, lounge and diner. Uh, we have not received any comments uh, from Highway Authority on this application, so we can only presume that they have no objection to the application. Uh, private sector housing has no objection to the application and consider the uh, facilities adequate for four occupants. In terms of concentration, uh, that will be 7%, including this property uh, in a 50 meters radius. Um, the site is in a su sustainable location near to the facilities in Kettering Road and within uh, proximity to bus routes. 
Um, but there's also rooms for bike store and bin stores and suitable condition have been imposed uh, to require the facilities to be provided. So apart from the chair, uh, the, the, there's no, no, nothing further to add and the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rita. Uh, we have two speakers on this uh, committee. Uh, I call upon the first one, please. Uh, Councillor Stone, please. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Thank you for being patient. I'm waiting. Thank yeah, it's you. been a very long meeting. I feel sorry for you all. Um, yeah, thank you. Just identify yourself, Daniel. I'm Councillor Daniel Danielle Stone. I'm the yeah. ward councillor for this area. Thank I'm you. really, really concerned that this is yet another part of my ward which is under the most immense pressure. Um, and I hear about it all the time uh, from the people who live in Talbot Road and all around it. It's, I'm also really worried because of COVID-19. I, I have sent you, Chair, and I've sent Rita, I think, and, and Peter, an article I found talking about the impact of COVID on um, HIMOs. And so I, I'm wondering at what stage of this particular crisis planning officers and planning committees are going to take that into consideration when they are approving HIMOs, because the article demonstrates really clearly that it's very difficult to self-isolate and, and to uh, adopt all the hygiene processes necessary to keep people safe. And I think that just adds to my general disquiet about the number of high modes. And one of the things that I keep asking about, and I never really feel as if I get a, a satisfactory answer is that when we're given the measurements of rooms, is that after storage has been taken into account? Because it, if that isn't the case, then I am also really worried about the quality of what is being proposed. Because, you know, in high most people live in their bedrooms. And I don't think it's good enough. To I've been reading up about it again today. And I don't understand why Northampton hasn't improved on the minimum standards, which is your right to do. You can set down higher standards than the minimum for, for bedroom space. Um, and I don't understand why we're not doing that. I am totally and absolutely opposed to this development and um, I hope you all vote against it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Stone. Danielle, if you just remain seated on that, I'll, I'll come back to your comments about the email that you sent, Rita, Peter and me, when I'm summing up, but I did receive it, thank you. Any questions to ask of Councillor Stone, please? No one is in no indicating. You're getting very muffled and garbled, do me. I take it you said nobody's indicating. Nobody's indicating. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Okay, uh, okay, I'll tell you, there's nobody indicating. Thank you, uh, Councillor Stone. Thank you very much. Um, as I say, thank you for waiting and being patient. Uh, I now call upon, uh, I hope I get the pronunciation right, sir. Callum Mohammed, please. Yes, Callum Mohammed. Um, uh, thank I, you again for being patient and waiting. Uh, that's understandable. I can see all the everything you have to guys go through. Um, you just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Yes, I am the applicant for the HIMO requirement. Um, You've got three minutes, thank you very much. I've only made myself available if there was any questions required because I do know there was one objection. That was Daniela. So if there was any questions to ask, please ask. Um, okay. But what I have done is I have gone through all of the HIMO requirements, I've put the um, guidelines in front of me, and I've made sure that everything according to the property are met before I made this application. Um, I've seen the extensive um, committee report, and it's exactly the um, same conclusion I have come to. I understand Daniela has come up with the COVID. Um, concern, but this doesn't really prove how this property can um, change or prove that would that would you know will make COVID any worse or difficult. Um, 
the when it comes to overdevelopment, where I am within the threshold of being under 10%, um, this property will be only for four occupants, no more than that, because I am restricted by the guidelines. Um, it's perfect for any individual who are local workers, students, or young professionals. Um, it's, it's 15 minutes walk away from town center, 15 minutes walk away from the hospital, um, 15 minutes walk away from Park Avenue campus for students, and right close to Kettering Road and Wellingborough Road. So very close to local immunity um, um, facilities and perfect for young local workers to stay near the main streets. Um, apart from that, I don't have any other things to put in, but of course I will be putting in um, a cycle shed to promote um, bicycle usage. And I also will be putting in a waste storage area with recycling facilities as well. That's all, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Mohammed. If you just remain with us and I'll open, the open you up to any questions from the committee. <clears throat> committee, any questions to ask of Mr. Mohammed, please? Councillor Carley's in the garden. Thank you, Maisie. Councillor Carley, uh, Muna, was it? You want to ask a question, Mr. Mohammed, please? Yes, yeah, briefly. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Um, I just wanted to um, ask, um, so in this development, we're talking about, again, a feature of one toilet and a kitchen to share? Yes, correct. Okay. H hence it's, why the restriction of maximum of four. Okay, okay. thank you for that. Um, and so, and sorry, I just, I just want to ask another question. Yeah, and so well, what are the measurements what are the measures being taken in terms of, I, I know you said that um, COVID-19 wasn't really a huge concern um, in terms of this development, but what measures have been taken in terms of people's safety? Um, what I have, the main, another main reason of me going forward for HIMO, it's putting a lot of interest in um, local agents to support me to get tenants in. Um, it's built up more competition, so it gives me a chance to pick the right local agent um, to also bring in safety measures, bring, bringing in inspections, monthly inspections, because that will be a requirement as well, to make sure that the tenants are safe, the tenants are um, living in a quality condition and the cleanliness of the property as well. Oh, all right. Thank you, Muna. Thank you very much. Right. Um, anyone else got any questions to ask of Mr. Mohammed? No? Okay. Um, Rita, do you want to come back on some of the points that's been made by the speakers, uh, particularly with the COVID-19 that Council Stone raised? Um, to me, that's yeah. uh, more of a health and safety matter, uh, and not a planning yeah. condition, even though I did uh, receive the email that she sent yeah. out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for uh, Councillor Stone, the additional information, but um, that unfortunately is not a material consideration for determining of this application. So um, we bear that in mind, but um, we have to stick to using our planning policy in, in the determination of the application. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, we've all got to bear COVID-19 in mind on, on a great wide front. Anybody else got any questions of Rita, please? Councillor Mary Markham and Brian Markham indicating chair. Right, Councillor Markham, Mary, yeah. Um, yeah, Rita, could you tell me, is one of the conditions attached to this IMO that the um, downstairs basement area cannot be used as a bedroom and can only be used as a lounge? Absolutely, yeah, good point. That, that's, always, that's always my concern. And also, yeah. second question, is that I didn't see a dining room, perhaps I've, I've missed it. Is the kitchen big enough for people to dine or are we saying people have to cook their food in the kitchen and the alternative is walk down the, to the basement or take it back to a bedroom? That's my two questions. Thank you, Mary. Rita? 
through your yeah, chair. Yeah, through your chair. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, when you refer to the condition, yes, uh, we, we can put a condition down about it shall not be used as a bedroom. Uh, it, it is going to be used as a lounge, a sitting room, and dining room in, in the basement. But we can always add an additional condition, say, uh, shall not be used as a bedroom. Uh, the kitchen is on the ground floor. So, um, so, so it is not in the basement. No, no, I realise the kitchen is not in the basement, mm. but the size of the kitchen, there's no dining room, the size of the kitchen, does it, does it have a table in it, or are we saying that people cook their food in the kitchen and then they have a choice, they either walk downstairs to a bedroom or they carry it up, to, walk downstairs to the lounge or carry it up to their bedroom? Right. Um, if, if you bear with me, let me just um, go back to, oh, I don't know, the plan is not there. Um, I think, I think, um, let, let me just get the plans up again, probably easier to explain if that's possible. Um, So hopefully you can see uh, the plan quite clearly. It hasn't showed the detail in terms of um, the sink or whatever, but in terms of the size and the location, private sector housing are happy with um, the size provided and, and the sitting room in the basement. So um, to answer your question, councillor, and I, th I think uh, we consider that to be acceptable for four occupants. Could I ask that we make it a condition um, that the downstairs is not used for anything other than a lounge? Mm, yeah. I think I'd, yeah. I'd be tentative to support that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right, uh, Councillor Markham, Brian, I think you've got a question to ask of Rita. I, I, I did, Chairman. Um, am I right, Rita? Uh, uh, Councillor Stone mentioned the possible need to review how large um, you know, rooms and in fact I, I guess how many toilets and uh, wash basins or whatever there should be um, in light of COVID-19 but also presumably other pandemics, epidemics or whatever. Um, am I right to think it would, it, it would be down to private sector housing rather than, than part of uh, the review part to the local plan, for instance, where we would have to change those things rather than the planning policy. Uh, through you, Chair. As it stands, obviously, um, this particular property, um, the size does in line with both our SPD and private sector housing uh, policy. But if you are talking about in future, uh, looking at minimum standard or whatever, that will be down to the local plan part two. Uh, to look at it again, you know, uh, so that will override in the future of the, uh, the supplementary guidance, obviously. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Rita, please? Chair, yeah, could I just add to that? Yeah, go on, Peter. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, the local plan part two, which is currently out to consultation for anybody who wants to comment, um, does have the adoption of the national minimum space standard in there. But that, of course, is for new build, because you can't apply that retrospectively. The, these are buildings, um, bedrooms that have been there, used for those purposes for a number of years. So it, it wouldn't be appropriate to try and do that. Um, in terms of the COVID um, issue, it, it, it's interesting. There, there are some discussions about that, particularly when we're talking about the designs of new build and new places. Um, but now this has happened once and we are encouraging good quality development, I think there will be a strong national drive to make sure that new houses, new developments do have adequate space to separate in future if this is going to happen again. But that will need a big change at national level. But at the moment, there's no suggestion that the MPPF is going to be changed to introduce any COVID-19 related um, standards. But we are, we are taking the measures we can at the moment, certainly on new builds to improve design. Thank you. 
Thank you, Peter. Has anyone else got any questions to ask of Rita before we go on to comments, please? Nobody signaling, indicating? Okay. Is there nobody indicating? No. No. Is Councillor Brian Markham indicating or? No, 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 he's had his question. I think he's asked his question. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going on to comments now. So anybody who's got any comments uh, can, can come in. Councillor Russell, uh, Councillor Burt, is Councillor Markham, uh, Brian wants to come in. I don't know on comments, but anyway, Councillor Russell, Catherine, if you want to lead off with your comments, please. Thank you. Um, I'm glad Peter commented on our attempt to drive up quality housing. Personally, I can't support this application. I'm not going to vote against it. I will be abstaining um, because I, I cannot imagine what it must be like for four non-related people to have to schlep up and down stairs and fight with one shower and one toilet. Um, you know, I, I personally, I'm really disappointed that we're still considering this type of application. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Birch, Jane. Uh, my point exactly, um, four unrelated people, different households, um, toilet and shower, toilet bathroom in one room. So you know, I, I don't think that's that's what we want to really um, putting, you know, that's not, we don't want people to have to live like that. Councillor Mark and Brian, did you have your hand up? Um, I, I... Sorry. Brian, you've got to unmute yourself. You, that's uh, it. Am I unmuted now? Um, yes, yes. yes. Um, but, but I didn't have my hand up the chair anyway. Sorry. Sorry go on, go on. We just couldn't I, hear you, that's all. I, I did not have my hand up, so anyway. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. No, got no comments. Thank you very much. Anyone else got any comments at all? No? Right. Um, well, the officers, I, I, would, I would like to support what Councillor Mary Markham said about making sure of adding a condition in this, if it's possible, that the basement is not used as a bedroom. I, I would like to add that in. Uh, uh, with that, uh, I'm, I'm a mind well, to vote accordingly. But uh, anyway, the officer's recommendation is for approval. Um, do I have a proposal that we accept the officer's recommendation? Thank, thank you, Councillor Kilbyshaw. Sam, thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? With that condition Chair. added in, of course. Thank, yeah. thank you, Chair. I was just going to clarify with that condition. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, with that condition in uh, for the uh, bedroom, no bedroom in the basement. That's right. So, Councillor Kilbyshaw, Sam's proposed that we accept the officer's recommendation. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Mary Markham. Thank you. Second. Thank you very much. All those in favour then, please. Six. Six hands in the air, Chair. Six. That's six, four. Those against, please. None against. Abstentions, please. Four. Three abstentions. Three abstentions. On that, on that basis, the application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Now it's time for me to say farewell. Good evening to Councillor Mary Markham because we're now coming on to MPH. Thank you, Mary, for your input. And, Good night. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. Let's speak to you later. Thank you. Right. Are we okay, committee? Uh, comfort break. I'd like, if everybody's okay, I'd like to crack on and get it done, if we can, without rushing it. I will not, I will not contemplate rushing it. These two applications deserve all the merit and time that it needs to debate it. But is everybody okay that we carry on? Okay, right. Right, we're on item 12A now, committee, which is the Northampton Partnership Homes applications. The first one is at Belgrave House Greyfriars. Uh, it's conversion addition of two new upper floors in Corcoran 
Fenestration changes and alterations to external facade to create 122 apartments. Um, Adam, good evening. Uh, you're on stage. This is your report. Would you like to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. The application proposes the conversion and addition of two storeys to the roof of Belgrave House to provide a total of 122 units of affordable housing, comprising a mix of one and two bed units. Belgrave House is outlined in blue on this plan. The proposal also includes works to the lay-by, a new crossing and a footway along the Greyfriars site, and these works are outlined in red on this plan. I've included two aerial photos to show the cluster of large scale buildings in this part of the town, Belgrave House, which is here, forms part of. We've also got the Grosvenor Centre multi-storey car park and the taller Northampton House. You can also see the relationship that it has to the Market Square, which is part of the All Saints Conservation Area, it includes a number of listing buildings, including the former Corn Exchange building over here. You can also see the relationship of Belgrave House here again to the service yard, which is on top of the Grosvenor Centre and runs under the building. And you've got Sainsbury's on this side and Boots on this side. Moving on to photographs from street levels, you've got Belgrave House here. You can see that it's concrete spanning the building and, and sort of smaller windows. And it's got a similar top floor level to the multi-storey car park. Again here, Belgrave House, the multi-storey, and the taller Northampton House building. Here we have the entrance to Belgrave House off of Greyfriars and the existing lay-by, and you can just see the Greyfriars site on the left here. Got two shots from the service yard that you come, come under the car park and into. This is a rear projection on Belgrave House, which also forms part of the application. And again, from this side, this is, this is a sort of storage area for Sainsbury's and you can see the plant on top of it there and this, this links into to boots to this side. I have a couple of Google Street View photos. Um, you can see that the, just to give an example of how the building is visible in the wider townscape you've got it just visible in the top of the market square here and then this coming down London Road you can see Belgrave House, the car park and Northampton House over here. And I'll come back to these wider views towards the end of the presentation. We've seen several photos, so I won't dwell on the existing plans, but just to show this is the lift tower and the stairwell, which is a bit higher than the existing building already. These are the seven floors of office accommodation. Okay, so the proposed elevation. This is the top elevation here shows the Greyfriars elevation. With, and this elevation, this side elevation here, it would be looking towards um, the multi-storey car park. So the top two storeys here would be new. And there's also a small increase in height in the, in the lift and stairwells. And again, one little bit on the back here is a fire escape. The existing concrete panels and small windows would be removed and they'll be replaced by floor to ceiling glazing to maximise light and also Juliet balconies. Vertical feature panels would be added to the building. And they're on all elevations that have windows. And there would also be a green wall balustrade on part of the roof. There'd also be clock features and vertical letting, let, lettering to further enhance the building. Moving on, the top elevation would face towards the market square, will be it set back, and the west elevation would face towards Sheep Street. And again, you can see those vertical features and a larger clock feature to the Sheep Street facing side. I've included a section just to show that the two extra floors are just slightly recessed in and that would help provide a subservient feel to the upper floors. This is the access rate arrangements to the to the building. Originally there was the application sought to come in off Emporium Way, but due to practical reasons, accessibility issues, and also safety concerns, the scheme was amended to utilise the existing access off Greyfriars and internal access off the car off the from the soup from sorry the Grosvenor Centre while the shopping centre is open. The amended scheme also includes a concierge area 
and, and various um, access controls running through the building, as well as changing the bin arrangements from chutes to bin stores on each floor. And I'll, I'll come again to that in a bit. To facilitate, the, to improve the access arrangements to the building, the application, in, the access is, is on this side of the building and it would in, include alterations to the lay-by, a new crossing, and then a footway to run along the Greyfriars site, connect up to the existing footway to help with the accessibility of the site. I've included a selection of floor plans, not all nine of them. Um, this is the level one plan. So this is the level um, that contains the six accessible, most accessible units. Uh, and it also has a corridor to buffer against the plant that I showed you above by the Sainsbury's units. Um, these are the most generously sized apartments. And you can see up here, the floor space is 122 square meters. Also enlarged the key, which, which explains the different colors on the floor plans. The, the, the yellow being the living room, the green, the bedroom kitchen in the open plan bit and bathrooms and, and storage and also a typical layout down here um, if members are, are interested. Moving on to the second floor plan, this is typical of the next few floors and you can see the floor with floors spaces are still generously sized for the size of the properties. You can see the relationship between the, the main building and the rear projection, which is typical of a town centre environment. And you can also see the refuge stores and, and bicycle stores on each floor. This is the sixth floor level. And on the sixth floor level, the proposal includes 12 um, garden beds or raised planters on the roof for residents, as well as there's 21 photovoltaic voltaic panels and also some heat source pump, air source heat pumps for sustainability reasons. This is the top, this is the floor number nine level and you can see the floor is just slightly set in um, as I referred to on the section. I've also included on this plan the level seven plan which shows there's a new accessible access created to the top floor of the multi-story car park. As such there is potential for residents to use the multi-story car park if an agreement is reached between the applicant and the owners and operators of the car park. Although the car park doesn't form part of this application, but highways raise no objections to a zero parking scheme in this instance. The final floor plan I've included is the roof plan. And again, you can see more renewable energy technology on the roof with, with solar panels and air source heat pumps. And again, I've already shown you the ones on the floor below. The applicant included a townscape visual impact assessment with the application. I've included a selection of viewpoints from this as part of the presentation. And you can see the existing building with the enlargement outlined in blue. So I'll just quickly run through a selection of these. The first is, is London Road. Here we have Cotton End. Looking across from Mill Lane. Toaster Road. The Market Square and Greyfriars. The assessment that accompanied the application found that whilst there would be an adverse visual impact during the construction period associated with scaffolding and, and such like, the proposal they consider would comprise a visual enhancement in the long term due to the improvements to the appearance of the building. There is an update in the addendum and essentially it details that the applicant has changed the vertical feature panels from stained glass to colored aluminium for various reasons, including structural. As a result, um, the references to stained glass in conditions eight and 11 need to be updated and changed so they don't refer to stained glass and they're just vertical feature panels. And I've highlighted the two changes to the conditions. That's the materials condition and then management plan condition. I've also included an example of the vertical panels that the applicant is suggesting that potentially come forward in their design and access statement. To finish, there's a couple of CDIs also from the applicant's design and access statement. And, and I would also highlight that this scheme has been subject to an independent viability assessment. The viability assessment found that the scheme would not be deliverable if section 106 contributions were sought for education, health facilities and open space. As such, and, and given the clear benefits, including the delivery of a significant number of affordable housing units to contribute to the council's fire mm -hmm. housing and supply, 
the increase in central area living to the benefit of the town centre, the potential to act as a catalyst for the regeneration of the area and the introduction of renewable technology is considered that the scheme is acceptable. Therefore, the officer's recommendation is to approve, subject to a section 106 agreement to secure the affordable housing and the conditions as amended by the addendum. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Adam. Thank you very much. Well, we have one speaker on this, uh, Mr. Jacobs. Now, Mr. Jacobs, uh, normal circumstances, we asked the um, speaker for Northampton Partnership Homes to join us. Thanks for waiting and being so patient. Thank you. But it, because there's no speakers against this, if you're happy to just be there to answer any questions or if you want to do a presentation, you're more than welcome. But I just wondered if you would be prepared to answer, just answer the questions, if there's any that the committee have got of you, which would you prefer? Uh, Chair, I'm very happy to answer any questions that the committee has to put to us. Um, absolutely fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So, committee, what you've got, you've got to buy one, get one free. You've got, you can ask questions of Mr. Jacobs or of Adam, but please let me know in which direction you want to put your question to, whether it's to Mr. Jacobs or to Adam. So it's questions uh, on what the presentation Adam's presented. So does anyone have any questions of either Mr. Jacobs or Adam, please? Councillor Goldwyn, Matt, yeah? Yeah, who's your, question, who's your question to, Matt? Um, either or. Um, Adam yeah. made reference to those aluminium panels and um, the first thought was sort of safety and fire regulations. I take it everything um, meets those, that sort of quality. Uh, Adam, yeah. if I can answer, if that's okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, uh, through the chair. Uh, Councillor, I can confirm to you um, with Mr. Lee Hunter from Building Control, where there is the design stage is, is ongoing, as you can see. but. Um, with the reports coming back from the tragedy that happened in London, we're vigorously looking at all materials to go on the outside of the building to be non-combustible. Um, uh, one of the issues that was raised with, the, with uh, stained glass, as Adam was referring to, is if anything should happen with stained glass for a fire from the inside, glass has got the potential to melt and shatter, hence the decision was taken to find um, a, a, a material that if there's a fire that it will react differently than chatter or break down and stuff like that. So um, I, I can give you assurances as the design go through all the phases. Um, we have had two meetings with the fire brigade, fire officers, um, everybody's looking through the design and then picking it apart as we come up with suggestions. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. That's all right with you, Matt. That answers your question. Yeah. Anyone else got any questions to ask of either um, Adam or Mr. Jacobs, Councillor Birch, Jane, yeah. And Councillor Carley. Thank you, amazing. Councillor Birch, Jane, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Jacobs, uh, it's an MPH application. How many of these um, units are going to be um, for rent and how many you know, do you anticipate for sale? Uh, I Councillor, if I can answer you through the chair. Um, yes, I will. I'll answer the question. Um, the proposal is to have the units or the flats rented to what they refer to as key workers. Because of the location of the building being close to the hospital, the fire station and the police, um, we're engaging with those authorities. Um, and then a partner within the development is the landlord, which is legal in general. Uh, they've indicated that they would like to, some of the uh, businesses that is using um, the shopping center would like to potentially nominate some of their tenants or workers within the building uh, in the shopping center to possibly rent those properties to. Um, the properties are to be leased, they are not to be sold, and that is the caveat of the development. So they cannot be sold on, they'll stay as uh, within the um, envelope of NPH to be at least ongoing. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Um, Councillor Kelly, Muna. Yes, hello, hi, thank you. Um, so yeah, again, either can um, can answer this. Um, I'm happy to be the proposer as well, if, if I'm not jumping the queue. Uh, I just want to understand from my, um, from my understanding, um, is it, um, 
the the we talked about the um, the multi-story car park. Um, is this does this building has its own car park or is this connected with the multi-story car park? Either one. If you happy for me to answer. Yes, Mr. Jacobs, carry on. Okay. Yep. Uh, councillor through the chair. Um, councillor, if I uh, can explain to you quickly. So in the past, um, the building we're referencing, Belgrave House, was an office uh, block. Um, and the top two car parking areas to the multi-storey was allocated to the building. Um, currently, our negotiations with the landlord is to replicate um, that same situation that we have there. There's 163 car parking spaces that we would like to um, to use for the residents when they actually take occupation of the building. In the past, on the seventh floor, there was a pedestrian access to get into the building. Um, and as Adam rightly pointed out, we convert that pedestrian access now to have a dual purpose to also be disabled access to get into the building. So from the top of the car parking spaces, there used to be in the past be a link into the building. We just uh, enhancing that access um, because we have on the first floor, the disabled uh, units um, and then so if somebody has a vehicle to go up to the top floor and then get into the building. So just as a background, so we also talking to the landlord and NBC, which is uh, managing the multi-car park, to look at ways to provide alternative access after hours into the car parking spaces, because if our tenants live in the building, they'll be um, using the building outside of normal office hours as the car park locks up in the evening. So um, that's as far as to bottom up with the landlord and NBC. Just, just, I was just coming at that point, just to be clear, it's not the, that's not part of this application. The application provides the potential for that by having the link, an improved link, but we're not actually securing or requiring the parking to be provided. It's not within the red edge of this application. Thank you. Okay, so, so just, to, sorry, just for my understanding again, so it won't be car park, it will be car parks for residents only for this block. It, it may be that's a, a deal to be done between the applicant and the owner and operator of the car park. As part of this application, it's being put before committee as a, a zero parking scheme with, with the potential to, to have the upper floors, but they're, they're not being secured. Highways have assessed it and in this instance raised no objections to a zero parking scheme given the highly sustainable location in the town centre. Okay, thank you. Councillor, sorry, if I can just confirm, Adam is 100% correct. Um, I can just express it is NPH's ambition to uh, foster a deal as quickly as possible to allow for the car parking space because the president has been set before with the office users having that space. But um, Adam's absolutely right to clarify the way he's done. Well, that's pretty clear. Thank you very much. Anyone else got any questions to ask either of Mr. Jacobs or Adam, please? Councillor Brian Markham's indicating chair. Uh, Councillor Markham, Brian, yeah. Um, no, Adam's made the point that uh, as it stands, his application has no parking. So yeah. We're, yeah, we've got to be sure of that when we're deciding here. Yeah. Well, that's true. But as I say, the, the Highways Authority are not raising any objections to it either on that basis. But that's, that's perfectly true. OK, so um, anyone else got any questions? No? No one's indicating, Chair. Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Jacobs, for your um, patience. Thank you very much. Much obliged to that. No problem, um, sir. Right, we, we go on to comments, committee. Any comments, please? Councillor Russell, Catherine. Thank you. I would like to congratulate um, NPH and our planning office for delivering what appears to be a very attractive and highly um, impressive design. And to think that we're going to be able to provide key workers with some reasonable accommodation, good accommodation, um, makes it gladdens my heart. So thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for that. Anyone else got any comments to make? Councillor King, Anna? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so my comments relate totally to the design use impact um, on the area. I think it's a great asset that it's going to bring to the town centre. And much needed for key workers and um, that have done so great for us in the past and so much um, at this moment in time. 
Um, the aspect and the, the onlook of what it's going to bring to the town centre is going to be a big boost into actually creating the town master plan and moving that forward as well. I think it's going to be a great aspect for the community. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Anyone else got any comments? Councillor Golby, Matt? Yeah, just to um, highlight that um, obvious point of regeneration and the, the need and reuse of um, a building that is very familiar to us and, you know, the presentation and the, the visuals there look, look fantastic. So I really do hope it acts as that catalyst as has been described this evening for that whole area because it looks really good aside from providing the, that much needed housing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gorby. Thank you, Matt. Anyone else got any comments? No, okay, Catherine. I just, just before I come to you, Catherine, I just want to echo everything what's been said. I, I've got nothing to add to it. I, I support everything what's been said. But Catherine, did you want to come back on something? I'd like to propose this application. For as, as the officer's recommendation. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. A seconder, please. We have a seconder. We have a seconder for Councillor Goldwyn, Matt, thank you. All those in, thank you, Sam, saw that. All those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation to approve this application, please. Eight hands, unanimous, Chair. Eight, thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we now come on to the... Chair, Chair. Um, yeah. My uh, uh, iPad is sudden. I don't know, I have it on charge all day, but um, it's declaring that I haven't got a lot of charge left. So if I disappear, uh, it's, it's not, not my desire to do so, but uh, just to let you know. That's, that's all right, Brian. Thank you. We're all having that same problem. I've got mine plugged in. But anyway, that's okay. Thank you. So anyway, we're on to item 12B uh, committee, page 121. Uh, the location is a senior citizen's community room at Hinton Road for a change of use of community hall to dwelling house with drop curb for wheelchair access only and alteration to windows and doors. Adam, this is your report. Would you present it, please? Thank you, Chair. The application site comprises the Hinton Road community centre and associated parking court and open space to the rear. The community centre comprises a single storey building sited to the rear bungalows. The application has been submitted following an MPH review of 16 community huts <coughs> and the site comprises one that was of three that were found to have low usage which they are seeking to convert to residential use. The remaining 13 community hubs are to be refurbished by MPH. I have four, four photographs of the building to share with members. This is the one from the front, and you can see, I'll just highlight now, a <coughs> side window to this side, and you can see the relationship to properties on Cosgrove Way. Then there's one on the side, and you can see the trees that are within the site. And then looking around to the rear, and you can see the relationship across to the Hinton Road bungalows, and then looking across at the open space. The next slide so shows the existing layout of the community centre, which has a small hall, a couple of toilets and a kitchen. You can also see three of the elevations are already served by windows and only the east elevation, this one here, doesn't have any. Here we have the proposed plans for the conversion to a three bed bungalow. The bedrooms, one, two, three, are towards the front of the property. And there's a large bathroom and an open plan kitchen and living area towards the rear. The front and rear windows would be modified and there'd be no additional windows to the western side. There would be one additional window to the east, so in here, but this new window would be screened by the new boundary treatment that would run around the property. An area of public open space would also be retained to the rear. This plan shows the car parking, four spaces for a free bed, one of which would be an electric vehicle charging point. To finish, there are no updates and the officer recommendation is to approve subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Adam. Uh, well, we have one speaker, Jonathan, Jonathan Evans. Jonathan, are you with us? I'm with you, Chair. 
Uh, it's the same thing, Jonathan, that I've put to Mr. Jacobs. If you're quite happy to sit there and answer any questions that the committee might have, Absolutely. Uh, you don't need to do a presentation if you're all right with that. I'm fine with that, Chair. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Right, committee. Um, are there any questions to either ask of Adam again or of Mr. Evans? Councillor Birch, Jane, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to um, thank Jonathan for the consultation that he's gone into over this. Um, a number of my residents um, were perhaps using this centre. It is, has a very, very low usage, but I understand that the groups that were meeting there have been moved to other centres nearby and there'll be no detriment to the local community. There'll be no um, reduction in their sort of in places that they can go to. So I really appreciate all the work that MPH has done to uh, make sure that nobody is disadvantaged as a result of losing this community centre. Okay, so there's not, nothing really to come back on that. Um, okay, anyone else got any questions to ask of um, Jonathan or Adam? No, no. one's indicating, Chair. Uh, Jonathan, thank you again for sitting here waiting patiently. I know it's just only a few minutes, but thank you very much. You're welcome, Chair. Thanks for that. Um, it's comments now, committee. Open to comments on the application, please. Any comments? Councillor Brian Markham's indicating. Yeah, Councillor Markham. Brian, yeah. Okay. Um, we just wanted to propose that we accept the officer's recommendation and look, you know, for reuse of this building. Okay, thank you. Councillor Birch, are you seconding? All right. Councillor Birch and Councillor King. Councillor Birch, you seconding? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. The officers have uh, recommended that we um, accept this application for approval. Can I have a show of hands that we uh, accept the officer's recommendation, please, based on the proposition from Councillor Markham and Councillor, seconded by Councillor Birch? Eight hands, Chair, unanimous. So that is passed. Um, as you said, thank you, Maisie. Thank you. Um, well, committee, it's been a long night. It brings the meeting to an end. Very, very well done. You've debated and, uh, and the offices as well for the report. Particularly uh, well done, Anna, on the report for Lancaster Way. But all the offices, thank you very, very much. Very, very much. And committee, well done. You've debated and democratically done your voting and made the relevant comments. I appreciate that. Well done to all of you. So please enjoy the rest of the evening.